Friendship. The Magician. Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Aftershock Corner, season four. Does anyone remember what episode we left off? Because it's been a while since we've done Episode three. Three, yes. Friendship. Yes. No, I think it's Craigslist. Really? Uh, Craigslist. Craigslist. Craigslist? What, the what fuck was Chris Jericho doing on Craigslist? The fuck are you doing on Craigslist? What are you doing on Craigslist? You men, you men looking for man? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, maybe I did. Maybe I found you. So what are you doing? Oh, what the hell? hell? What are you doing on the channel? I, 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 uh, yeah. Uh. You know, yeah. He has no defense for that. <laughs> you have no defense. Hey, don't talk about my daddy. But anyhow. You know, we were looking for each other. Whoa. That means. Whoa, hey, yeah, I'm so glad I'm going to move out of your swing again. This is why we should have held the Festival of Friendship. Then this is hearts... a Festival of Friendship! You hold the bell the wrong way. Then our hearts wouldn't have been shattered. Join out again. Sorry guys, we're disturbing people. So we're gonna have a new format on the show today that can be described in one word. Oh, wait, we gotta do it, we gotta do it yeah, again. French! The Magician! I am a Wonder Birdman Finch and this is... John, the magician, and this is uncensored, unfiltered, unadulterated, unedited, too long, smart, slain, son of a gun, Steve, the future champion who will win it and actually take over. Stand. So wait a second. No. Go. Do I gotta change your nickname again? Because that's no. a long ass fucking nickname. <laughs> or for short, you can just call me Bill Nye. No. No way involved. Why then? This is. Is that an insult to science? You know what? You know what? The champ's talking. <laughs> the Aftershock Corner. WCW World Television Champion. <laughs> I'm going to introduce him. The Big Dog. The, <laughs> the, big, the Big Dog. The Big Dog. Chris Dodd. <laughs> the Big Dog. You finally got a nickname. The Big Dog. The Big Dog. I stole it from Roman Reigns. Little Dog. All right. The Big Dogs. So everyone, so no, I want dipping dots. I can okay. actually, no, fuck that. I'm the little dog. You know why? Because Roman Reigns is the big dog. I can't, I can't impeach Roman Reigns. So he's your, so, so you're his bitch. I'm, I'm his little bitch. <laughs> even, though I'm the, even though I'm a champion, he's not. But anyhow, so uh, everyone's probably wondering where the hell, why we haven't been doing a show. I don't think anyone's wondering why, because no really. Snow. 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 Hey, there's there's no way we're left. gonna tell you. Did we get a comment? Yeah, we did. Comment more. Jesus. But, um, comment below. Please Let's comment. Know. We love comments. And we don't read them. Comment the show. Anyways. We don't snow. Yeah, that, that's pretty much because it's been snowing. So comment below. What do you know? If you didn't know, we live in Massachusetts and it snows a lot. No, you're yeah, wrong. so we couldn't do the show for like a week because we might. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not possible. Can't be broadcasted. Uh, we could have. weren't even allowed to be here actually, technically. Yeah, we would. Are we not allowed to be here? Oh, it's it's snow. Snow. All right. And snow. then, um, so. We missed a lot of shows that we've used, so we're just gonna we're just gonna shoot and we're just gonna shoot the shit really. So you're gonna shoot me with shit? That's awful. <laughs> you're gonna shoot the shit? Oh, what the hell? Why is? It? Oh, I know what happened. I uh, know what happened. Did it stop playing? No, no, no. It, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't suck. Did the intro again? No, okay. Yeah, I'm not doing friendship for a third time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I just needed to plug it in. I just needed to plug it in more. All right, but anyhow. So, the, so this time, today for the show. But we're each going. Every single time we do the game, we just game boy. Shut the fuck up, Steve. You know what? The champ's talk. Okay. That was me. I'm playing my game. I don't give a shit what you're doing. I'm going old school. I don't give a shit what you're doing. Okay. This is 2017. Okay. We talk to human beings. <laughs> we don't fucking play video games <laughs> like nerds. Hey, I've been doing this shit since 2000. <laughs> you enjoy shit since 2000, Mom. Well, Alright, anyhow. So hey, today I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. Do you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? <laughs> Thanks, Blaine. No. Thanks, Blaine, because you're kicking. Oh, ripping off movies here. But anyhow. <laughs> Good movies. Good, great movies. But anyhow, so today we're going to organize the show a little differently. We had to, we had our fun, we had our fun, but now we got to talk about what's been going on in West Sloan. And um, today we're, I'm just going to, we're each going to take a topic and talk about it, and obviously we'll bounce off our ideas. We're just going to talk about whatever you guys feel like talking about. And since John has to leave soon, and so does Steve, we're gonna start with them, but stop. John's going first because he's busy playing his game. So, all right. It's a fucking pussy. Fine, I'm off the game. The game's off. See what you did? You killed Sonic. Good. <laughs> oh, Sonic's dead. All right, John. So, well, the series kind of gives things. What do you want to praise? What do you want to bitch about? What do you okay. want to? So I got. All right, I'm gonna do praise in the show. So, let me do it again. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is that time for the festival of friendship? <laughs> the magician. <laughs> 
That was awesome. Yeah. Huh. Want to talk about it? It was by far. Want to say a magic trick? No, I don't want to say a fucking magic trick. Leave it alone. Steve, leave it alone, okay? <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> leave it at pants. Ooh, no one wants to that. see it. No one wants to see that. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, very, it's very minuscule. Can we make a balloon Sure. <laughs> 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 There's the bullet. <laughs> but anyhow, talk about the festival. Right, I'll shut my mouth now. It's a jackass. So anyway, let's just start here. So the best segment that Ross produced in a long, 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 long time. Best I feel like we say that a lot. Yeah, but I don't think this one's gonna be. Hey, you know what? Yeah. I'll say this, and this is kind of a. You know, this isn't so much of an opinion. I think it's such a general opinion. The fact, best segment of the year so far. Yeah, but we'll do that. It's well, February, so it's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be hard to cop this one. Okay. Well, but pop it up. Pop All right. This this segment may be lap, upset, and a few other emotions. And a few other emotions. I might have cried a little. <laughs> I think we all cried a little. Yeah, we did. We all died we, a little inside. We died. Oh, I was a six on the pitch. I was laughing. But anyhow, let's yeah. let let's let John talk. Break so, this down piece by piece. Okay, so Chris Jericho on the Titan Tron welcomes everyone to the Festival of Friendship and makes a mean, worthy face. Do that. You, you, you can do the face. Do the face again. Okay. Well, wait, do the introduction. Okay. I don't think you mean. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, grandparents and grandchildren, welcome to the Festival of a Friendship. <laughs> the magician. <laughs> we have friendship with each other. And we'll get I just add that I am considering getting a similar suit. Jericho is wearing for my brother's wedding. Yeah, no, you're not. You're not doing it. Were you really no. considering that? A sparkling silver suit and silver fedora. Chris Jericho came out of it with a scarf. Yeah, with a scarf and, and shirts. Yep. Uh, the whole yeah. joke was Jericho oh, has had gay feelings for Kevin Owens for a while. Yeah. We all knew it. Yeah, we did. Tell by the way he's dressed. I think we talked about it the last season. You can tell by the way that Chris Jericho's dressed that he has strong feelings for men. Yep. And, uh, like but I guess, but, but, but if you couldn't tell by the way we dressed, there's more. <laughs> what? what? There's more. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Owens comes out and Kevin looks disgusted. Which we we'll find out why later on. Yep. So, Chris Jericho is going to be presenting him with gifts. And but before he got to the ring, he took all the Vegas showgirls down to the ring with him. Oh. And left, Ke left Kevin Owens in the dust. Kevin Owens is saying. Did somebody uh, make right. a comment right. this week on saying that Chris Jericho was like that? Got friends go. Wasn't you this week? Wasn't it you that said? It? It was oh me! Um, was that funny? You said it was Chris Jericho is the crazy. No, Chris Jericho was the crazy ex girlfriend that Kevin Owens agreed the boyfriend agrees to hang out with, thinking they're just friends, but realizes he's made a terrible <laughs> mistake because she doesn't <laughs> like to get back together. But anyhow, <laughs> made a horrible mistake. <laughs> is that but true? Let's I came up with the Chris Jericho as the preferred uncle. I just call. I I called them gay Tony. We so probably a lot of yeah. things, but this week there's only one thing to call, and that's a guy. Yeah. But anyhow, let's uh, let's because he had a whole turn. But let's let John. Let's think he went to Godfather's theme song. That would have been sick. But let's let John continue. All right, so they get in the ring, and Chris Jericho decides to hand gifts to one Kevin Owens, starting with a sculpture that was made by a German sculptor that cost seven thousand dollars. <laughs> Who pays this much for art? That's what Kevin Owens said too, right? <laughs> yeah. Actually, no. He's no. He said he liked it at first, yeah. but destroyed it. It, oh. it didn't. Well, it looked like it two men kissing. Yeah, it did. They were like like intense making out. And Kevin Owens is even like, "What is this? Like, what is this supposed to be? Like, it just shows how close we are when it comes to friendships." Yeah. Then he presented him with probably the best gift. It was like a best gift. Look at that other. Uh, the creation. Yeah. The creation. <laughs> the creation. <laughs> oh my god. No, hey Chris, I got two kids. I can't hang this up. That's that's one so of the best lines in the whole thing. Pants. <laughs> pants. <laughs> that that uh the kids comment was funny and the and the it's all right, you don't need pants comment though. So. That's another one too. You complained in that Seth Rollins was gonna attack Triple H's children. I think a bigger part would have been the idea Chris Jericho was gonna hang that Kevin Owens house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh hey, 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 Jericho was the heel at the time, but I I'd rather be knocked unconscious than awake to see that hanging up in the fireplace. <laughs> the six, the that would terrifying that would be. See, if you see, wait, 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 you don't know. Let me explain the, the whole thing. Yeah, let's let me explain the, what the picture is because we'll laugh over, so, over, a, over a lit fire. So. If you got, if for all you religious folks out there, if you know about, 
Because I'm religious. If you know yeah. about uh, the Sixteenth Chapel, I am aware. The famous painting that God is touching Adam. Yeah. In this scene, in this, uh, it's Kevin Owens is God, and Adam is Chris Jericho, who's wearing nothing but his wrestling tights. Yes. Wrestling tights. <laughs> yeah. Who? Uh, <laughs> I could not of course, that. in the original, in the original picture, he was. I thought it was Adam and Eve. No, it's Adam and Eve. It's, it's Adam, Adam and God. Okay. Yeah, it's Adam and God. So uh, they're both naked. Yeah. Yeah. So well, God's always naked. So. So so when I saw when I looked at that, yeah. when I saw the picture, no, I saw like Chris Jericho like, oh god, please, he asked me to wear something. And he's wearing something. Yeah. He's wearing. He's wearing. Because yeah. I thought he was gonna be. If you guys ever seen Rush Development, it's like that one scene where Michael Sarah is wearing the uh, cutoffs. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> uh, David Cross. Oh, David Cross. Oh, David Cross. Cross. I don't. I don't think Cross wears the cutoffs, but it's like they did the scene of the creation, the picture of the creation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. and Michael Sarah's wearing the, the fucking. But there's <laughs> more. But wait, there's more. Uh, we also like have. Sounds like a good sales pitch to me. Look at it. From it does. But wait, the wait, there's more. For only nine ninety nine a month, you can get that a bit of it. Now, contained segments like this. Here comes friendship, the magician. <laughs> that was found Ooh, off of Craigslist. Yep. So he gave me a reminder of baseball sports. The magician, baseball player. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe it was him. The knuckleball with the quarter. You know. Now. <laughs> He starts, to, he starts pulling like the, uh, the, 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 the stuff going shit out of his mouth. Not yeah. shit, but no, like, nice I actually expected like like I, I think it was like a form of like a. I expected a Kevin Owens to get on the mic when he did that. Like, I'm not going to put that on my neck. He just had it in his mouth. And then he does that. Like, first, Chris, my son's six, he has the exact same magic. Because he does the roll as the. And then when he turns the. Uh, and then he screwed up a trick and Jericho got mad or whatever and uh, put him on the list. Which is, by the way, my new ringtone. What? Use me the list. <laughs> Every time someone sends me a text and or a uh, YouTube notification. Uh, I'm going to send you a text right hold now. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me just send it. Use me the list. So, in the meantime, I'm going to make more Hi, check it out. I got all new Flex Seal. It's so amazing. You can put it on the screen door and ride it through an alligator if this is swamp and not get killed. Woohoo! Wait, oh, wait. Uh, I had such a wait. But anyway, I'll, I'll tell you the second. So like, when, when, once you get that set up, so that sets up. Oh yeah, where John, John's supposed to talk about it. Uh, just Chris, you, yeah. you just finished up. I'll, I'll so this sets up where Kevin Owens now has his he has a gift for Jericho. Oh wait, there's one more thing we forgot. The uh, segment where Chris Jericho says, "I just want to give you oh. another gift." No, he says, "I'm going to give you." And, he, and he's gonna give him the it, but it cuts, it cuts to a long ass Goldberg. commercial break. Yeah. He goes, he goes it. Goldberg, and he says, Goldberg, Goldberg. you're gonna get it. They're gonna call Goldberg, yes. And uh, yeah, someone came up. So, and then it was the return of Gilbert. the legend, the former Gilbert. light heavyweight champion, Gilbert, who before he could even get to the ring got blasted by Kevin Owens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kevin Owens gets in the ring, he's mad because he actually wanted Goldberg. I think we all did. And yeah. Then, no, I, I, I knew it was, was going to be Goldberg. I, 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 I thought it was going to be Goldberg for real. And then no. once I saw Spock with Sparklers, I saw Goldberg from the beginning. Yeah. So now uh, he has one more gift. I saw the Sparklers. Kevin Owens has a gift oh. for Chris Jericho. And it is. So he opens up the box and he looks at it. He's like, oh, I need a new list. That's awesome. And he looks wait, at wait, it and his name's on it. Also, wait, 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 wait. Why is my name on this list? Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> okay, so he gets the list of KO yeah. and ends up Chris Jericho is the first name on it. And he's like, and then he says, why is my name on this list? Owens drops the mic and blasts him with the belt and beats the living hell out of Chris Jericho. Powerbomb on the apron and he throws him into the Geritron 6000. It wasn't a Geritron though, it was like a but plank. It was a, Ve it was a Canadian Vegas. Yeah. The festival so, of friendship. So, so, and afterwards, before he does that too, Owens looks at Jericho and says, I hate you! So, and then, Michael Cole, I will say, for the first time in a while, I was really good at commentary. Cameron Owens is walking out of here with his only friend, the Universal title. I, thought that I wish, I, you know what, I, I, I feel like JR would be. When, 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 Jer, when Owens hit. No, 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 I said this. Oh, you're no good bastard! 
Damon Owens, why? Why always? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so, damn it. It's a great segment. Yeah. We can all admit that, but my, I have, I have one issue. It's more of a nitpicking for me, but it's a great segment. Uh, the Abram Powerbomb. Okay. Is I, I don't like when he does it all the time. Well, I feel like it waters down the move. You want those? It's supposed to end the feud. It's supposed, and, and he does it all the time. You know something? It's one of those things you just save There's... for the end of a feud. It's what it's well, about here too because he's like trying. So to they built up this Abram Powerbomb as his best move, but we know that's bullshit. Everyone knows it's bullshit. We all know he has one move that he's teased using several times. I always say I'm not gonna fall for it. <laughs> then he hugs the arms, and I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna do it this time. And what he does is he stalls a little now, and then he power bombs. Because he does have those with the package power driver. We it's in the pack and power driver suplex instead. We all know. But here's the thing. I still think one day, possibly at WrestleMania, even, it's going to happen. I think it'll do to Jericho. Yeah. Too. What? Just let him hurt? Yeah. Here's the thing. I understand it's a dangerous <laughs> move, but how long has Kevin Owens been doing it? How many people has he hurt? Everyone. Yeah. Killed everyone. Booed everyone in his sight. <laughs> even did it to Sammy through a ladder. So. Sammy's, and he, Sammy's fine. Sort of. Kind of, I think. Yeah, it's a job. Oh, so. But anyhow, anyhow. He's not a jabber. He won. It all did. It's handsome person. But they, they, but they definitely did. Handsome man. It was definitely a surprise, but they definitely planted it because there was one reason we knew it was happening is because Triple H talks to Kevin Owens. Also, five. too, with the fact that uh, Chris Jericho kept bringing up the fact that he was going to help him. He helped him defeat all these superstars. Yeah. He's going to help him defeat Goldberg. And I did oh. like Jericho's promo like right before. Oh Kevin God, Owens. yes. That's, the list, that's, like, that's kind of a small moment. He's had the most fun in the wrestling business. Here's my question. What if Jericho helps Owens win at Fastlane, thinking he can have that connection? No. no that's, if, I would have, if, if he would have just gave the, uh, the pop pop power bomb as kind of like giving him payback for hitting with the code breaker, then yeah. But. This is like. It, this is way more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, he literally beat the living piss out of him. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to. Uh, they're they're past that stage of friendship. Kevin Owens to win, right? Even yeah. though I want Goldberg to win, I want one. <laughs> I want Banner, He deserves two for that. I will smack you with my ring hand. Oh. But then anyhow, I will, I will come back and slap you with my ring hand. Yeah. But anyhow, um, this is one great segment. But obviously, another thing we have a problem with is it did made him at the show. Sure it went last. Yeah. Because this said now the crowd is completely dead. And the other yeah. thing is because it was Charlotte well, in the middle of the event. We all knew it was dead. Out. It was dead for half of the show. For Charlotte in the middle of the show, I think reasonable doubt would have been brought up to. And well also, too, it was the, the viewership was down in the teenage the girl department, women department. Because, you know why? Because it was on last. That's why. They want to set out, like, oh, you know, you know the woman's, ma uh, the woman's you know, tenor women match goes important. on last. But I can guarantee you, if they put it out at like nine o'clock, there'll be more of like a teenage like girl viewership yeah. <laughs> because they have school yeah. the next day. Like, oh, by the way, not not all teenagers skip school. Yeah, but you, you gotta remember too. Like, I mean, Bailey. Went, so we could just talk about that. Bailey finally won the World Women's Title match. Really good. Uh, well, we're, we're really, really happy. More than that, more for us. See, the thing now is we all know she's losing in two weeks. Yeah, it's no surprise there. Because uh, Charlotte can't lose their pay-per-views. Yeah. Um, and don't make it. That's but why not? Right my now, biggest, uh, my biggest qualm with this is why not have it be at Mania? Yeah. Now it's watered down. They're like, oh, sure, he won the championship one time now. Dave Meltzer put it best. You can only win the championship for the first time once. Yes, and they wasted it on a, on a raw in February. Okay. So, yeah. so yeah. let's do it with him even more of a waste because... Uh, so I was just gonna win it right back, and then everything's just gonna go back normal. Where's McMahon here? I need to tell you something. They say you can only win the title the first time once. Nah, I beg to differ, you know why? I'm Mr. McMahon. <laughs> so, according to me, you can win the first time five times as one. Well. Why? So, 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 so. No, this is Wentz. So this is Wentz. This is Wentz. Okay, so okay, you're you related to Wentz. Yes, I am his, uh. I mean, he was one cousin in front of the uh, shower room. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, you're telling me if I slap you right now that he wouldn't heal it? No, I'm not telling you that. What I am trying to tell you. <laughs> Bret Hart did it. You think you can do it any worse? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. 
So we had the Intercontinental Championship. I played dirty. We had the Intercontinental Championship. Kiss his boot. What is the Intercontinental Championship? No, 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 no. It was a little bit. Over a little bit. And then drop. Hey, kiss that. I don't want it. Watch Still totally. Totally. I'm Vince McMahon. Why I say ghost? I thought you were Vince McMahon. <laughs> we can fucking change the name every time now. Wait. First, first you're this. You see the smart slayer Copley, and now you are no, it's not, Vince it's McMahon. Not. Hey, this guy's do stuff sometimes. And then John said, hey, he, he keeps doing his name while he's getting on leave. Because mine's on. Because that his, his rolls is. off the tongue. But anyhow, uh, but yeah, should, this, was, this man, this man. That belt, kid. But then he, mm -hmm. oh, just Steve, you're back. I, see, I don't recall there being a 22-year-old kid. I don't think that exists. But anyhow, uh, or, it's 27. But anyhow, <laughs> he's, he's, he's Harold. I thought he said he was Wait a minute. Okay. All right, so, uh, great segment. Great segment, yes. Yeah, great segment, because the, the child goes back to the video game. So you kind of already probably have a belly win in the water. Because you can't handle it. That belly can't handle the spotlight anymore. It's, it's, it's gonna only, it sucks it's only going to last two weeks. Hey, Steve, you're next. What do you want to talk about? Well, it's a, it doesn't matter. He's focused on playing his video games instead. No, he's... he's, he's okay. I want to talk about... Um, I'll talk about a uh, looming threat to go to the new England of Super Camp for wrestling. Yep. Uh, so, it's uh, clear that, you know, this, no matter how good of a match New Japan, ROH, or anyone else is going to put on, WWE is always going to have that number one spot. Yep. But New Japan's expanding to America, so that could potentially change. They could. Do. could, but here's the thing. They have good relations with ROH, TNA, Gorilla, Chikara, and just about every other American indie company. Yeah. Because they're always letting their stars cross over. My thought is, what happens if New Japan shows up one day, they hit it off great in America, which I think they will. I think they're going to surpass TNA and Ring of Honor within their first year of business. He's right. I think um, like all those fans that are you know, sick of WWE and the way they book stuff, well, we even go to do Yeah, see, they're, they're just waiting the for it. And they're just waiting for the expansion to happen so they can jump ship. Here's the thing, way. I don't think that's going to hurt WWE that much in the beginning. I don't. I don't think it's going to hurt WWE at all. Honestly, because no matter because what, they still, still have family, more fans. They yeah. still have the family demographic, child demographic, and casual fan demographic. And they have, they have, they have, they have, yeah. so they can tell you, from all my friends that just know wrestling exists, they don't even know the Japan yeah. Yes, yeah, because it's not. No, it's, I mean, so, it's a it's a massive company to in professional yeah. wrestling, but it's not known. Here's the thing. It's no by us. But yes, no by us because we're we're, we're hardcore wrestling fans. Yeah. If you're a casual wrestling fan, you're not gonna have a clue. If you look at it, New Japan, isn't some really some indie company. It's the it's company huge. of Japan. It's, it's the second it's, biggest company in the world. It's the biggest company in the world. It's the biggest company in Japan. They have, they can afford Titantrons. They can afford Pyro. Can afford to work, work in the biggest shows. Yeah, they can afford big arenas. Big arenas, like, big shows like to the Tokyo Dome. And like, if they came to Boston, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually went for the TV Garden. Where off the bat? They could. They could. Honestly, they could. Now. Yeah. Oh, it's in Tokyo Stadium. Ah. Uh, Tokyo. Not for a regular show. Not for, no, no, but like, for like, if you're going to have a race for some people. Yeah. Well, I mean, I keep getting on. I'm not annoying fan that keeps sending WWE, hey, New England's nice in August. Do you have any pictures in August? That so really like bring a slam to the summer? Hmm? Do they? Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about WrestleMania? Love that, huh? So I can freak my tits off now. Okay. So, <laughs> so why gonna, would it be outside? It's because it's, it's going to be a choice city. It'll be at the garden. No, they only they're, they're, they're garden's not big enough anymore. They're still going to do the garden. No, they're going to do what they're doing football. No, don't get me wrong. The Garden is home, is still, in my opinion, home to one of the best WrestleMania's of all time. It's Man Booker T. It is. Yeah. I. I he's been down to pick him up a bar. I really can't. I can't. love tickets for Bill Buck. He's been down to pick him up a bar. I can't make up my mind on which WrestleMania I do like more, 14 or 17. We can decide that when we do the weekly series. Ready? Here we go. Whoops. I don't like that. All right. But anyhow, so yeah. I didn't see the love. New Japan shows that's up in America. I'm not saying they're gonna start off big right away, but give them a month. Yeah, they're gonna grow very fast. Yep, they will grow rapidly because they will they will quickly gain the fan base from Ring of Honor. Yes, they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, gonna have this way. A lot of a lot of the stars from WWE might want to jump ship. Like Sami Zayn probably could jump ship after. They'll gain they'll gain my view. 
They're gonna have another. It depends though because to, uh, a lot of these a lot of these stars are under contract for a long time. Yeah. Like, I think that I think they might actually be able to buy out smaller companies like Ring of Honor. They could, yeah. they both of them. TNA, they definitely could. Yeah, TNA, they definitely. Do. I don't know what the new, new ownership looks like. It's going good for them right now. Boo, Davy! God damn it, Davy! Why? Why, Davy? Why? What the hell happened to Davy and Sandow? No, no, Davy. No, Davy Richards. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. What the hell happened to Davy and Sandow? I don't know. I don't want to be an Aaron Rex. Awful. <laughs> you, you, yeah. He's like, I will. I will say this. Have you ever seen Liberace before? Well. Yeah, it's him. It's, yeah. He's literally a ripoff of Liberace. Okay, he's doing this game. So he was at WrestleMania one. Was Liberace was. So, so TNA. Yeah. But yeah, very flamboyant. But yeah, I, I definitely could see Japan being huge. Yeah. Yeah. There's one, one guy we can all agree on. With lip gloss. If WWE has John Cena, New Japan has Kenny Omega. Now I'm not saying they're the same character. Really fantasy. It's just really fantasy. Whether it means they're going to tear him up. Where they going to see? They're going to see Kenny Omega in Japan, and when they come to America, him being the big American guy that speaks fluent Japanese and fluent English, Kenny Omega is going to be the guy they go to see. I fuck Kenny Omega. <laughs> you don't like Kenny Omega? I will give him credit. His match with Okada was awesome. Yes, I think. Not six stars. It looks like I'm saying in America when he comes because he's the thing. And really a five star match broke the scale. I'm really supposed to be a four star. <laughs> yeah. And I want to sound like a jerk and say like you know. You have to speak English when you get to America, but honest to God, you kind of do. Ask Sin Cara that question. The other Sin Cara. Yeah, well, that's one guy in a big company, a bunch of guys that speak English fine. But when, but when to, all these guys get to difference. when all these guys get to America, they're going to need to speak English. They're going to need to and speak fluently. They'll learn. That's how we get out of I'm not saying they won't learn. I'm just saying if they don't. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. He's fine. English, but you can't understand him. Yeah. He's got thick. He's got a thick accent. Oscar, you can understand because she speaks slowly and pronunciates what she's saying. Yeah. It's all that uh, like these people don't know do how to. Much. I don't know if. I don't think. Um, Kick. Hideo yeah, Tani can speak. He, he can. He can. He's pretty well. He hasn't cut an English promo. He's he very out of it. He's wrestled in the States. I don't know. Then yeah. again, he keeps not For a long time. Him, so. You gotta remember too, Hideo Tami has been injured. That's he's true. true. He's been injured. Plus, Hideo Tami has been wrestling in the States. For a long time, also too. That's a good point. Kent, Kent, uh, GTS, the sure. original. He did it finally. Yeah. <laughs> and he got hurt again. Yeah. Can't have that scene now. So, Eric, Rickey, does New Japan pose a threat in the future? Yes. Yes. Future? Yes. Right now, no. Right now. Even when they started their expansion, no. Is but WWE oh, within, note of it? No. see, the thing is too, Kenny Omega oh, signing a Sunday one year extension, one year. So. February of 2018, he'll be a free agent. So what happens if they're still in the midst of their American expansion and Kenny Omega signs with WWE? Yeah. Then their expansion's over. All right, so uh, and that's his plan too. But he, can't sign, he he wants to sign a one-year extension with New Japan. They do the expansion. He gets his name more known, and then signs with WWE. That's his plan at this point in time. I actually didn't change match. I do think they're going to be used to taking over. Because they signed a lot of indie guys like over the past few years. And there's a big name Simmons. coming up soon. Adam Cole. Oh, yeah. Um, but it was only. Oh, no, that's. Uh, that, but, you know, ROH yeah, yeah. has lost a lot of their guys to WWE. And Kyle O'Reilly. You know, New Japan's lost all their guys to WWE. They lost the club. They lost. Oh, yeah. They lost four scary. prominent members of the club. Yeah. And one of their biggest rivals. All they, all New Japan she, has in terms of the biggest rival, right? Yeah, it's uh, AJ. And then the I always thought he was see AJ, Anderson, Gallows, Finn, and Nakamura. They lost five main stars within a three year time period. I always thought Shinsuke Nakamura was in the big club. So I was confused by that, but then. Yeah, he, he was always against them. Yeah. His stable originally was the huge stable to the, the ball club. AJ too faced Nakamura. But then, uh, but yeah, I definitely see. I can see New Japan being a threat because everybody knows about it. I watch it more if I could, but you know. Yeah, I don't get. It. Like that's the thing. Like I don't get. The reason it. why I watch exclusively WWE because I don't get it. And my last question is: obviously, at some point, if they grow fast enough, they will go ahead and have the Raw or SmackDown. I think. Probably SmackDown post. What channel picks them up? 
I'm going to go with a bold prediction and say ESPN. Um, I think they go right for the big money right there. And they go to I'd say, I'm going to say, say give us a slot. Why not Fox? Why not? Fox? Yeah, why not? Oh, Fox Sports Money. Yeah. yeah. Fox, ABC, TNT. It's kind of like that. I hope TNT no, airs basketball it. games. Fox airs football games. NBC, um, ABC, CBS. I hope Spike. You know what? Like, where I, I hope Spike doesn't pick the mic because that would really, because that, that's the kind of movie. Actually, movie. I'm not gonna say ESPN because ESPN is more like just Disney. Sports Disney. Plus, um, ESPN. Don't buy Disney. Plus, e ESPN. Uh, ESPN does WWE. Yeah. New way. Japan should go to Nickelodeon. Holy shit, that is a bad idea. That is the that worst idea I've ever heard of <laughs> AMC. So, I would have rather watched WWF 1995, and I mean that. <laughs> that. Get, get the poop out of here. Did any you mean, man? I'm going to kick your butt. You, what, it, what, it, it's Flash the Thunder. Flash the Thunder is around in New Japan for wrestling. I'm going to kick I'm you. Gonna, I'm going to kick your butt. I'm going to kick your butts. Here comes, and here comes Left Shark from the Super Bowl. Here comes Left Shark. Left Shark. And now Black. it's time for the halftime show. Presented by the Bikini Bottom Super Band. I, actually, <laughs> I, actually, I, have, I would actually watch that probably. Well, the okay. Bikini Bottom Super Band is the best halftime show of all time. I, I like it better than that. Okay. Band. Now it's on to Chris. So my go. topic, interesting. You want to hear my topics? Fucking turn the video games off. It's off. It's off right now. It's off. So my topic is fucking Bray Wyatt. Okay. Yeah, you have to kind of tell so, what happened with it. That's so disgusting. You're fucking Bray Wyatt. Yeah, I know, right? Just want the Big hairy man bear. Um, so the hell is that asshole? So Bray Wyatt. Um, me personally, I never liked him. Uh, I didn't think he was intimidating. I didn't think he was scary. I don't like his spider walk. I don't like him. I think he's terrible in the ring. He's just scared. Um, he's just, he does the, he's done the same oh, thing since 2013. Good. Over and over and over again. Now, Bray Wyatt, had he won the championship in 2014? Awesome. Yeah. Would've been great. Would've meant something. Wins the championship in 2017, three years later. The aura of Bray Wyatt is gone. Thank you, Cena. The aura of Bray Wyatt is gone. It's been, it got destroyed a long time ago. Thanks, Cena. In the, and, right and honestly, Luke Harper is way more intimidating and way more frightening than Bray yeah. Wyatt is. Well, I just think, I like Bray. I think Bray can have good matches. It's not the best, but again, I... It's not the best, but it, his his aura has worn off. That's because of he keeps losing all the time. Yeah. Here's the thing I want to say. He had won in 2014, the heel got cheered, and you know how on people's ass I am about that. Oh, well, so yeah. in 2017, people are going to get sick when he gets booed a little bit. <laughs> That's fine. He's the bad guy. He's getting booed. So, what well, is well, well, Kiss already? Go. Jesus Christ. All right, so, boy, what? I guess, I so to quote our truth, I don't swing that way. Here's, here's, what, here's what I think about it. So, Bray Wyatt. I respect the Batman hat, but I don't You know, I think he probably has. I was just doing that just to say, like, oh, like, like, you know, having The Rock beat him at WrestleMania there to really elevate him. Same thing with losing the Kane. I guess Kane's. Kane's going to get up. Kane's incredible. The Rock beat him. He's so funny. You don't even see Kane every week. Kane is such a great The Rock beat him was a slap in the face. It's right her face. And, and then he didn't do it. It was a slap in the face of all wrestling fans. It was a slap in the face to everyone face. saw Luke uh, Bray, uh, the other the her Luke Harper, Eric Rowan. There we go. Got it right that time. Brody, Chris, third time, third, third, third. Yeah, I'm just gonna stop talking. All right, so I'm not talking, guys. By the way, because I can't fucking speak. Okay, right, so, so, so what's your topic? <laughs> well, no, I'm gonna get my thoughts on the why thing. Kind of down. So, uh, so Wait, oh, Eric Rowan, that's in his name, loses in six seconds. Yeah. Bray Watts. And it's very, it hurts them. And it not only, not only has their career been hurting to begin with, uh, it hurts them even more. And they never really got off on the right foot. They ain't got a job for the brothers of destruction. Yeah. So, 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 oh, so, he's the part-timers bitch. Yeah, so. Kane and the Undertaker. So my thoughts is Bray Wyatt, you know, uh, 
I think has a really great gimmick, but probably the greatest gimmick maybe in WWE. And uh, that's not WWE, WWE or main three creators. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he can speak really well. He was awesome in NXT. Yeah. Yeah. And it was awesome when he first, right when he came in, then obviously we know what happened. Ring of Fire! Um, sorry, 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 sorry. Ring of Fire! You know, everyone ring? The magician. But uh, when, the, <laughs> when the Wyatt family came in, everyone was threatened by him. But then he lost Cena. See? And he lost, then he beat Cena because a little kid. A little kid got him. A little. He beat Cena and his little kid. See, I remember him. that match. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, Cena, fuck this little kid, take him up and Fuck this little that. kid? Wait a minute. Whoa. <laughs> Cena, fuck this little kid for me. Alright, sorry. Cena, screw this little kid, pick him up and Even AA. worse. <laughs> Even worse. Cena, beat up this little kid in AA in the middle of the ring. I keep saying. My, my point to that match is. All Cena had to do was walk down the stairs. No, all they had to do was take the little shit by his throat and AA his ass through the middle of the ring. Through yeah. the middle of the ring, so a fucking 10 pound kid can get AA through the middle of the ring. Fuck yeah, he's singing very white speed song with a little shit. All he had to do, get down to the bottom step and step left. After kicking the kid. And win! After kicking the kid in the chest off the stairs. Alright, so anyhow, let me continue. So then, I'm gonna take Cena off the stage if they're on the fucking. Off the stairs! The stairs. So He's much, out of the stairs! So pretty much then Wyatt loses to Taker, loses to Taker again, and then uh, he finally got something again. going. I would say he built some credible momentum. Yep, and then not he lost. En not enough to win the title, though. Then he won, then he lost against Roman Reigns. Yeah. Then he had a meander feud with the ECW Originals. For no reason. <laughs> you <laughs> forgot about that, huh? <laughs> I got chopped off by Bob Lesnar. And my chopped off by Lesnar. And when uh, Bubba, Bubba had a tail, Braun Strowman went to deal in those matches because he had no fucking clue what he was doing. Oh, wait, 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 Shut up. He, Bubba had, had put Gosh, the trash can in front of himself and was hitting himself in the head with it. Yeah. Because Braun didn't know what the hell he was doing. Braun! The magician. Yeah. yeah. And the anyhow, got better. What I'm pretty much trying to say is... I am happy to see him champ, but, 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 I feel, oh, I'm very mixed about it because it's just like, I know where it's going. We know where it's going. We knew it was going a month ago. Randy Orton losing. It's going right around the waist. So thank you, Chris. We can bounce off. We can, because then on some, Randy Orton was supposed to have his title shot, but he decided, no, I'm not going to have my title shot. He got why he the, okay, Where Wyatt so is the master. I thought that was going to be the RKO out of nowhere. Yeah, well, that was probably expected the false sense of security. Hasn't happened yet. Well, technically, because he's somewhere in the room, it's an RKO somewhere. It's out of nowhere. What's that? Because you don't know when it's coming. Except for he's pounding the ring. Except, so you except, except you kind of know when it's coming. I'm not going to do it. I mean, Spinning flows. I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it. I lied. It's, it's, it's power slam, and then it's. I can't, I can't see him doing do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I swear to God, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to punch you. I'm just going to punch you. I'm, just, I'm serious. I'm serious. I lied. <laughs> I actually lied. I'm actually hit you there. But anyhow, so lie. Randy Orton does not want to face Bray Wyatt, but he doesn't want to Because Randy Orton is the servant, Bray Wyatt is the master. No, 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 no. That is Out of the Wyatt family, Luke Harper. That's who I love. Yeah. So, <laughs> obviously now they have enough. So now they have enough. Look, there was six. I like Brian Janome. Oh, no. So now, <laughs> bro. Oh, they're in the Wyatt family. Hey, bro, bro. He isn't in the Wyatt family, just not in the Wyatt family. He's just, he's in Wyatt's family. Yeah. He's technically not a he's Wyatt family. He's in member, the Wyatt Because the Wyatt family doesn't exist. Yes, yes he's in Wyatt's oh. family, just but not any, the Wyatt Wyatt's family. family doesn't exist. But anyhow, anyhow, he's in Black Jack Mulligan's family. So, so then, uh, I think it's very interesting well, that Randy Orton did that because it would have been more predictable that he could just turn on and went away. So he's got to turn on though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess yeah. I guess he's getting rid of it. What? The false sense of security. False sense of security. You've yeah. been wait. I mean, you've been waiting for months to rant about it too, haven't you? Yeah. I've been waiting. But for they got to admit one thing: they are doing a good job playing the storyline out as long as they can. If we were to name the top three, I think we can all the top three most likely people to win the Battle Royal on SmackDown. Number one's Luke Harper. Yes. Number two yeah. is Kane. Number two is Randy Orton. <laughs> no, number Why two is Randy. Like, no, wait a minute. Because that, that way he can be like, oh, I prevented anyone from getting a shot against you. No, uh, no, Randy Orton. Number three, the Undertaker. Number three. I think Luke and Randy Orton. Number three, Kalisto. 
Who? Fat Taker. Other than Fat Luke, Taker. If you can't say Luke Harper or Randy Orton, who's going to win the... Uh, How about Badass Taker? Taker. Taker. Yeah, Biker like Undertaker. Um, actually, the John main event of WrestleMania is going to be AJ Styles. So, so, so wait, wait, the main How event... Was, how about your glasses? Air Styles. How about a dustpan? Yes. <laughs> Air Styles. But anyhow, he buries him. But yeah, so the whole... Chestis. The whole Bray Wyatt thing is just... The freaking Deacon. You know, Deacon David. Big XLG. Drax the Destroyer. Isaiah Cash. Cash. Isaac Hinkum. <laughs> DDS. Big Christmas Preacher. Big Diesel. We're in a palm tree from WrestleMania 28 that Dude. blocked everyone's vision. Mike the Uniboss. Okay, Owen, your thoughts quick so I can get out of here. Okay. And then we'll still continue. Yeah. So, something I kind of I guess want to rant about. I don't even know what I really want to rant about necessarily, but I'm just going to end up with this. Dolph Ziggler is here to It sucks. It's all. So, I don't like it. It's stupid. This is my time. Let me have my time. My time. My time. And so my time is now. Listen, it's time. Yeah, you know I got. So it. let me get this. It's time. So yeah, let, me, let, let, let John pretend you're a non wrestling fan, and I'm trying to explain Dolph Ziggler. Okay, but I am. Sure. So let me explain to you what's going on. Okay, John. Yeah, so Dolph Ziggler. So I'm gonna say bad guy. You don't know what a heel is. He just, so he's but he knows who it is because he's a wrestling guy. Because he's upset and he's been losing all the time, right? I'm never going to be upset. Yep. Yeah. So then, he uh, he's still losing, though. So he's still, so he's still losing. So, so him becoming a bad guy, he's not working for him. So, then, so, typical, so, Saturday, then, so it's typical Saturday morning cartoon guy. Again. No, then there's more. So then uh, backstage, okay. Dolph Ziggler's like, I can take him both on. So Daniel Bryan puts him in a two-on-one handicap match against two good guys. What a dick. So then there's more. <laughs> ready for this? But John knows wrestling. No, 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 but no, no, I'm just, I'm, uh, I haven't been in it. Yeah, you two sets is no wrestling. So then, you're asking a wrestling man that to say he doesn't know wrestling. This is a bit, this, this, is, is, no, this, is, this is a bit tense in the area because I'm talking about actual fans. Yeah, no. So then, here's what happened. Ready? I'm what saying what a dick in terms of with Bear Bryant. Yeah, yeah. But it has more, ready? Okay. So then, uh, at the, in the match, yeah, Ziggler takes out Kaliso before the match. That's pretty old, like, behavior, right? Yeah, I don't think that. Well, I don't think it's a good bad guy behavior. Yeah, and then uh, he fights Apollo Crews one on one. Okay. Then the the guy that he took out comes back. Mm -hmm. And Noble. then <laughs> the good guy, the good guys, the good guys, the good guys, the good guys in a two on one handicap match where the bad guy that the bad guy was in, yep. they win. So wait, 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 two on one advantage good guys. Yeah. Going up against the team of one bad guy. One bad guy. And the bad guy does everything he can so he can win. Well, this is a bad guy, Robin versus Joker scenario. What the fuck? No, the, the, so the bad guy does everything. So, so the bad guy does everything he can do to win and still lost. Freaky kind of form. That sounds like a two-on-one scenario that nobody wants to be a part of. And then on and then on SmackDown. That makes no sense. Anyhow, so that the gist of it is Dolph Ziggler pretty much is still a baby face. He's like, there's no heel change. And he, this would be the non wrestling fan here. The heel, the heel is the one that's going up against the odds in a two on one situation. The heel, right? That's such a one. And then so he goes on Smack. Fuck. Then he goes on SmackDown this week. D caller. And Dolph Ziggler cuts his promo about how he's going to take down everybody that's going to take his spot, which is, sounds like a heel promo, but the way he said it did not come off as a heel promo. He came off as a Dolph Ziggler. Your voice changed. I, have, I think I have like a frog in my throat. The rock. Get that fucking frog out. <laughs> you know what's good for you? But anyhow, yeah, so then uh. Get that in. So as long as I get that frog out. Then, then it gets worse, right? It's now. So Dolph Ziggler too. They're trying to make Dolph Ziggler too. So Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler. Two. Wolf Wiggler. <laughs> also <laughs> takes out Apollo Crews. Dolph Ziggler. The Wiggler from Mario. The <laughs> Caterpillar. <laughs> also takes out Apollo Crews by putting his leg into a chair twice. It was supposed to make it. Like, Take him credit, Lou. Take him Ow, seriously. Take him credit. Ow. I was supposed leg. to take him seriously, but then, but he's still lost, so it's like you can't really take him seriously. So it's pretty much a guy that loses, and then he whines and whines and complains when he loses. So it's Mark. Then there's more. So it's Steve. Apollo Crews, too, goes on talking smack. Talking shit. And he's not in crutches, not wearing a knee brace, 
from this Apollo you saw that, right? Apollo looked up where you got yeah. it. He, <gasps> he looked fine. He, he looked fine. He didn't, it didn't look like he was selling. Let's pick it here! All right, I gotta go. The Stormzigla fin has just been a huge fail. What about it's about a two? I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Do you want to get out of my show? Deuces. Get out of my show. Yeah. Not your show for long. Yeah, get out of my show. Oh, I, I might want to add in this announcement. Uh, I have officially been accepted into Bridgewater State University. Yay! So at the end of the semester, I am leaving with the Aftershock Corner Championship, and I am taking it to defend it elsewhere. Congrats, bro. Congrats. But you're not taking that away. Oh, I'm taking that Yeah, Congrats, bro. Well, all right, but anyhow, so it's like. Taking so how does Dolph so how, how, not taking any championship. Explain how Dolph Ziggler. This is my championship. If you want my honest opinion, Dolph Ziggler shouldn't have turned heel. You know what he should have done? He should have won the Royal Rumble. Fleal. I deserve that. I deserve that. That's payback for all the times he did it to us. But if, see, if it was James, it'd be fine because everyone knows that. My skill. Oh, yeah, I forgot we brought uh, Tip Tenori off the show yeah. because they don't do it. Tip Tenori? Yes. Stole his shoe all the time. All right, here's the thing. Kelly, am I wrong? Don't think if you stay pace could have won the World Rumble. Yes. And would have set for it. Bray Wyatt could still be champion. Bray Wyatt goes Don't think it's a little odd, but you know what? I would pay to see that match on paper. Because they built it up. This is different. It's very different. You have the Don't think as a face kept saying, you know, no matter how much he loses, he's going to keep his passion and keep going. I don't think it happens. He said, you know, don't. I really was getting behind Don't think it was a face where he kept yeah. saying, you know, yeah, I might keep losing all the time, but every time I get down, yes. I just get up stronger. I like that idea. It's kind of like a Rocky Balboa kind of character. I mean, that's and they have Bray Wyatt, who's saying, you know, he's not. If he gets knocked down, he'll just have his crony stay here. So now all he does is just lose and then bitch it, and then he just throws a hissy fit when he does lose. So like he did, he takes out people with the steel chair, and then David O'Connor like, oh come on. Every time he loses a match, David O'Connor gets so upset every time he takes people. It'd be different because instead of like an anti-hero versus a big villain, it'd be the anti-hero versus the anti-villain. Yeah. The guys who don't fit into their category perfectly, but everyone still accepts. But anyhow, accepts Chris, what do you think of this Dolph Ziggler? Uh, it's pointless. Yeah. It, it was pointless in the beginning. I respect any His... of you walk out of the hoopers and take a picture with a fan. <laughs> Especially one who looks like a complete jackass wearing a flower shirt. Yep, a Taurus shirt. But anyhow, uh, so I will bring that shirt. I, in. I I'll let you wear it. I personally hate that shirt, and <laughs> I personally hate that shirt. I, I personally, you know, Ziggler fits the mold of a babyface. Oh yeah, like you said, everything about his character is true. When he was a face, and it made sense. Me or Steve? When uh, you know, when you said the, uh, you know, what his character is yeah. or was as a babyface. It suits him perfectly. He never gives up. He fights until the very end. That fits him. I mean, this and Sunday at Fastlane, he did everything he could to win. He was going up against two baby faces. It just didn't. It just doesn't. This face him failed miserably. I think also the heel turn. Another yeah. problem with this heel turn, anyway, let's just say they did the heel turn. He's going up against two guys that really don't get much of a reaction as yeah. a baby face to begin with. Uh, all right. Breaking news. Upsetting news. George Dan will still pass away. Aww. Yeah, uh, Bob, I, I, I heard that. I saw that earlier today. Uh, Bob Backlund ended up calling his house. Uh -huh. uh, and his wife picked up the phone. And uh, she just dropped the she, she said that uh, he, uh, Bob Backlund asked if uh, George was going to be coming home anytime soon. And she said no. She, she kind of had an inkling that he was going to pass away. And that, that happened Monday, I think, or Tuesday. Some, what, somewhere between there. Everyone's probably, you know, he was a great legend in the business too. He know? was too. He, he had, was. Uh, he's, he had a crippling illness that he never. That's why his tongue was green, right? No, he, he took something. Okay. It was like a pill or something that he took. There was something that like he had. A, I know he had an illness. Did you actually know too? The weird thing. He was a college professor too. He was too. He was a teacher. He was a principal. He, he got into. He got, he got into wrestling super late. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, his wife. I still remember him trying to stalk Macho Man Randy Savage's wife. And when he kept, he when Kobe Kids and David O'Tongue go in a match on the old school episode of Raw, he comes out and he would eat the, I, I always love when he would eat the stuff with the pat. The, the, uh, the turnbuckle. Yeah. That was his signature thing that he did. And uh, yeah, his work basically, you know, said he wasn't coming definitely home. Definitely moves, you don't need to, you don't need to be the greatest in the ring. No, he was beloved by everyone. Yeah. Super nice guy. Yeah. You know, in and out of the business, everyone loved George. Everyone had great things to say about him. Yeah. 
from whatever you hear. Everyone, everyone loved him, and uh, you know it's a big loss for WWE. Yeah, you know he was a legend. He, so I expect them to do like something for him. Yeah, you know, if they don't, I would I, I wouldn't mind. I don't think they will. I mean, he was a big star for them. And the obviously, too, Chavo Guerrero Senior also passed. Oh away. yeah, that's right, Chavo. Chavo Senior passed away from uh, liver cancer. He just got diagnosed yeah. with it in uh, jail last month, actually. They did a little something for him. Uh, they probably didn't have a lot of footage of him they could go really use. Yeah. So they couldn't really did they do the tribute for him at the beginning of the show? Yeah, they did. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I looked down for a second and missed it. They and, did uh, something for him, so. So the, that's, 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 a, that's incredibly upsetting, too. Yeah. Another member of the Guerrero family passes away. Yeah. First, uh, first Eddie and now. Uh, One thing I remember now, about him is right now, he definitely helped intensify the Eddie Guerrero travel group. He did. He did Chavo Classic. Yeah. Another another big loss for this industry. Yeah. He was a great wrestler too. And uh, it's you know, put some tough losses on the WWE this, this past, you know, couple of weeks here with George Dean went up. Chavo Senior, but it happens. Yeah. And uh, you know, all the praise to Chavo and George and his family. It's it's you know, it's tough, but you know, it, especially with George still had this for a while now. It's I think it's going on a year. With with Chavo Senior, he just got diagnosed with it like a month ago. Yeah. So that must have been when he got diagnosed. That must have been like rapidly. The cancer must have been rapidly going through his body then. If it's yeah, hard, it if, if he dies like if he's you know dead less than like a month, or I think it's like more a little less than a month after he was diagnosed with liver cancer, which is crazy. So then let's get to a lighter topic. Um, I'll just take the next one too, just so that way we can kind of so Samoa Joe. Uh, his run in the in the uh, main roster, I think, has been really good so far. Yep. So um, well, it's okay. I don't That's think it will. I don't want to be the jackass, but so uh, yeah. You know, Very he jackass. took out Seth Thank Rollins. Um, two weeks ago, he took out Roman Reigns and beat him. Not clean, but you know, he still beat him. Um, Not clean as a sheet. Not clean as a sheet. But I thought it was good. Dude, he is a rag. But he still looked off. But he still looked, he, he still looked really dominant. I like his call. I like his call. How he's gonna take out everybody. He's I like how. <laughs> I like how he took. He took he's gonna take out everybody's hero. So and then uh. Change He was especially impressive. He was especially impressive this week. Um, <laughs> so it looks like too that uh. Now that now that Owen just turned on Jericho, I wonder now if he's gonna form this alliance. Owen, so, Owen turned on you. Turned on Jericho. Oh, Owen. I said Kevin. Owens. Owens. Oh, Kevin. Kevin Owen. <laughs> Kevin Owens. Not that Kevin Owens. His first name's Kevin Owen. Kevin Owen. So now that Kevin Owen just turned on Chris Jericho, um, I wonder if he's gonna form an alliance and join up with Triple H. Like, so the looks of it is. Yeah. Looks like that. I saw that there was like a an article that said you know is Triple H forming an unstoppable heel yeah. stable. It looks like Joe and, and having Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens on the same team, that's going to be Samoa it. Joe, Kevin Owens, Triple H is, a, uh, is an unbelievable stable. Yeah, that is going to be The three man power tricks. But and then, uh, uh, probably will. I liked uh, Samoa Joe's interview with Michael Cole. I thought that was really good. And I like how at the end he's like, everybody, Triple H always had to hold everybody's hand that he's mentored. He doesn't need to hold my hand. I can get. Because it's always a price for me. Yeah. Right. But I can uh, but I can get the job done myself. I don't need anybody helping me win matches. I can win myself. You know, uh, and I even liked uh, when Michael Cole kept asking about Triple H and Samoa Joe's like, is this about Triple H? Because you keep putting his name up and I'm getting really annoyed. Um, and then Smo Michael Cole's like, no, no, this is about you. Uh, but I do like that he keeps putting it up Triple H because obviously that's why he's here. He's, and I like how he talks about- And the thing about, is too, is you're not gonna get a straight answer out of Samoa Joe as to why he attacks that moment. Yeah. He never will. Because you know what, because he's a heel. He's not gonna tell you why he did what he yeah. did. Because I'm a bad guy. And I do sure. like, but I do like to- uh, sure. How he even mentioned how, how he talks about how he's loyal to Triple H. The park, how he's loyal to Triple H because it makes sense because Triple H is the one that really got him to WWE at the end of the day. Yep. You know. Because uh, he, talk, he, he talks. He even talks about. about well, funny news about that is that CM Punk was the one who was lobbying yeah. for Joe to go to WWE, WWE because they are friends in real life. Yeah. yeah. Best friends actually in real life. And Samoa Joe, you know, talks about how he has Just this Phil, how he has this pent up aggression. Phil Nye, the Phil Nye, MMA the MMA guy. Phil Nye, the awful MMA. But guy. anyhow, uh, right. I got the class across the hall. All right, we'll see you later. You're gonna, you're gonna come back or not? <laughs> but anyhow, so uh, Samoa Joe then talks about you know uh, how he's had this pent up aggression that he wasn't. You know that he that he busted his ass all over the world for 
you know, 18 years were never recognized by WWE. Uh, obviously, we know that's not necessarily true because yeah. he was in another company that they don't want to talk about. So, um, busted his ass all around the world. Actually, he didn't wrestle. All yeah, he and never I, did. But yeah, he never wrestled in Tina. And never existed. But I'm liking his one, and obviously too, one thing that we knew because he mentions that he's not here. Uh, that he's not the smile of like Sami Zayn, happy to be here. So obviously, when he mentioned Sami Zayn, we knew it was going somewhere. Yeah. But you're not happy about this part, probably. Um, um, I'm I'm indifferent on it. But I don't think he, you know, Sami. It's it's frustrating with what's going on with him. I did, like his, I did like Sami Zayn's promo that I did, I did like his promo too, but at the end of the day, we all know Sami Zayn's not getting a world championship match ever. Yeah. And to be completely honest, I know this is would you want to see Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn at WrestleMania for the Universal Championship? Yes. My point exactly. But, um,. Right now, Jericho, I want to see Jericho right Yeah, now. but like, uh, hypothetically speaking, would yeah. you want to see that as a WrestleMania main event or yeah. co-main event for the Universal Championship? Yeah. Yeah, because it would draw money. Because yeah. people want to see Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. People want to see them fight for the, for the but championship. But there's still more story. There's still a small story. You know, seeing Kevin Owens talk about, yeah, you may beat me at Battleground, but where, where did you go after Battleground? Yeah. There's, there's, there's still a lot of story. There's still, there's still like years worth of story to this. But... WWE, you know, is allergic to talent half the time. Yeah. So they 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 have a lot of it, but they don't know what to do with His it. His match with Rusev, he had a good match with Rusev. I'm actually happy he went over Rusev, but I think he was going over Rusev. Handsome, right? handsome Rusev. Even though he, did, he broke his nose. Um, and then if Rusev was here, I bet Rusev wasn't very happy. That's why Rusev wasn't really on the show this week, because he's very upset that Rusev, that Rusev lost. Um, or John said whatever. John said. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, it's, you know, that's another guy too. You know, I you know I have my reasons for not liking Rizzo, but uh, it's not just games though. He's he, he's being mis being misused. Yeah. And it's all started with the whole Enzo More feud. Yeah. And even before that too, the Roman Reigns feud. Yeah. It's he's been miscast. Yeah. In a way. He's good. In terms of like, he should be higher up on the card. Yeah. Fight for the universal title. Like he. He was fighting with, you know, no matter which way you put it, he was fighting John Cena a few years ago. The main guy in the company. Yeah. And look where he is now. 2014, because it was WrestleMania 31. Yeah. He was, fight, he was fighting John Cena at WrestleMania for the US Championship. And look where he is now. Bottom of the card. Losing the same. Barely even on Raw every week. He is injured, though, too, so. But at the same time, too, it's like he can still wrestle. Yeah. And it's not like he has a debilitating injury. He's got a, you know, it's, I don't think he's a broken nose, but you know, it's he can still wrestle with it. Yeah. He's got the. I didn't laugh. His mask came him. off. He was all mad about it. And uh, but you know, it's no matter which way you put that, he was fighting John Cena a few years ago. But this. And but, now he's at the bottom of the fucking card. But the Sami Zayn, uh, you know. Uh, Samoa Joe too looks, looks like it's going to be interesting. Same thing um, with, with Sammy too is he was fighting Kevin Owens who eventually became the Universal Champion. Yeah. And had great matches with him. But do you know what came out of that match at Battleground when he won the fucking match finally? Nothing. Nothing. They had zero plans for him to, to which was, further his career. Which what I was thinking, like, once this feud with Owens fizzles out, what's going to happen to Sammy Zayn? Now, now we know. I'm dropping to Braun Strowman. Hey guys, guess that. Hey, you, we could have used fifteen other people, but now let's throw Sammy in there instead. You know, we we you know we could throw you know Rusev in there or someone like that, give him a little bit of a fight. Nah, let's throw fucking Sammy Zayn in there, one of our most talented guys in the company, and make him look like a bitch. That sounds like a better opportunity. But uh, that, that would definitely work. I mean, I don't think they necessarily you guys plan on having Sammy Zayn face some more. They have to kind of make do with what they have. But Seth Rollins is hurt. So yeah, those it was supposed to be it was supposed to be Seth and Samoa Joe at yeah. fa Fastlane, but that obviously can't happen now because yeah. Seth Rollins out another at least another month, I think. Yeah. So same the injury. So same thing, the perfect replacement because uh, you know he he is also someone you know 
and um, emulates Crohn's style too yeah. a little bit. Um, so then, uh, what else? What do I want to talk about? Um, what else happened? Really, the women's championship match went over. We didn't really go to the SmackDown one all that much, actually. Uh, Naomi, SmackDown women's champion. She very legitimately hurt. Yeah, very indifferent about it. Uh, you know, that, that whole, you know, when she said, I woke up, it's not a knee injury, it's an ankle injury. Right. Uh, over I think she bit. probably heard it when she did the moonsault to her. But, um, yeah, about that fucking woman's set up match for WrestleMania. It might not even be on the card. Kick off. As in general, not even, there's not even one set up match for SmackDown. They said there's, there's a report from Cage Side Seats that says, um, uh, they wanted Naomi to go into the match in Orlando as the women's champion because she was going to get a big reaction. Okay, why not have her win the title at the fucking Beaver View? That's what I'm saying, yeah. And this was too soon. And on top of that, too, they're thinking about not even having the SmackDown Women's Championship on the show. Yeah. There's no, there's gonna be no championship match on the show. Instead, she's gonna be either in a, she's gonna be in a tag team match instead. Wow. Yeah. Riveting. Riveting shit there, isn't it? Hey, you know, we felt like putting the title on Miami exclusively, uh, exclusively for the fact that, you know, the, it's in Orlando. Yeah. That's the only reason why she won the championship. Is what I'm starting to think. Yeah. That's because she deserves this. It's in Orlando. That's the only like, reason why she, she wanted this early. She, she's busted her ass for years. I can't say she didn't deserve it, but like the story wasn't it wasn't not right at elimination. It wasn't right in the fact that she probably should have won the fucking women's title about two years ago. Yeah. And, so, and, and 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 she was barely she utilized she was barely, she was barely utilized in the storyline leading up to Elimination Chamber. Yeah. So it was like See, Naomi to me is like that's another one. She's better off as the challenger. Yeah. Because you don't know what you're gonna get from her as champion. Is she gonna be a good champion? Maybe. Yeah. But I do question if uh since she's legitimately hurt if Alexa Bliss is gonna win the title back so that way they can kinda of... See to me if they did that it'd be a waste of a championship run. Yeah. Like that like this fucking raw woman said oh, it's such a waste of it. See to me in you know in ter- this is a wrestling term in a way, not really but like they shot the load too early, meaning they pulled the angle off way too soon. They should never have had Bailey win the championship on Raw. Yeah. And they should have had. They should have, had, have should not have gone on last. That was a huge mistake. Especially because the crowd was dead for half the match. Yeah. Um, the match is good. And now, one week now, guess who's winning that championship match? Charlotte Flair. Exactly! Because she can't lose in fucking pay-per-views. And I'm starting to really fucking think she's going to win at WrestleMania too now. Yeah. And then she'll lose on the ball the next night, run it back at... It's so stupid. They've they've booked themselves in a hot potato corner that it's like they don't know what the hell to do with the title. And then, uh... And with the SmackDown Women's Championship too. You know, should should Alexa have been a long-term champion? She should have at least gone into WrestleMania. Yeah, she should have gone into WrestleMania with the championship. Naomi as champion doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It does not make any sense because she was rarely put into the spot. Just like AJ Styles should have gone into WrestleMania with the WWE Championship. Yep. I mean, I know you wanted to see Cena win, but and, and, but look what happened. And he lost the championship two weeks later. And it's funny too because he lost his championship two weeks too, and he's not even going to be in contention for the championship at WrestleMania. He's getting, it, look, it looks like. He, because they're starting to build to it to that mixed tag match with John Cena and Nikki versus The Miz and uh, Louise. Because I'm hearing rumors Nikki's done after WrestleMania. Those rumors aren't really true. I got false information too about that. And uh, it's the, the rumor now, it's more not not fact, but like I'm about 90% sure this is true. She's taking significant time off after WrestleMania. So okay. we might not see her for the rest of the year. Just because we're obviously not going to see Cena either. Yeah, right? we're not going to see Cena probably for the rest of the year either. Maybe around Christmas time for the holiday tour. But well, other than that, he's he's done. He's not he's not coming back for a long time. And uh, the thing with Nikki too is um, she's having some problems again with her with her, with her neck. It's causing numbness in half of her body. Daniel, I mentioned I'm talking about. So she's having numbness, right? 
So then they, I don't know, you probably didn't see this on talking. They have Natalia slam a slam a face right across the SmackDown panel. I don't know. Any that was more of a write off angle, I think. Yeah. I don't know why they're doing it now. But uh, it's she's taking significant time off. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see her for the rest of the year. Yeah. I would not be shocked. Uh, it's not that her neck's in bad shape because she got fixed, but it's not. Yeah. She's she's never gonna be hundred percent again, no matter how. And her time as a full time competitor after WrestleMania, it's done. She's yeah. just, she's part time after this, after WrestleMania. And then uh, you know, uh, obviously they're gonna blow off the Natalia Nikki Bella feud. They're having the Falls Count Anyone match next we, week. Maybe at Fastlane or or at a uh, Fastlane because it's a raw show. Yeah. But uh, maybe it's next week. Maybe they keep it going on for a little bit longer. All I know is I'm sick of it. I'm done with this. I hate it. I really wasn't a huge fan of that match at uh. It was this point? Because it should have been a fight. And not a, the Falls Count Anywhere sh should have been an elimination. It should have been. Uh, if you want to add some injury, Falls Count Anywhere, no disqualification. Yeah. Well, there is no disqualification. So Falls Count Anywhere, no disqualification, no holds barred rules yeah. type of thing. Where it's see the thing is, there's not enough of those matches. So matches like that, where it's a deep personal rivalry, should called, be Falls Count Anywhere. It called for it too. It, it called like, for it. It's it's a it's a week it's a week too late. Yeah. And then uh. You know, we have uh, the tag team titles for both shows. Uh, I mean, it's it's getting good. Raw is good. Uh, Raw is good. Some looks like Angel and Cass are going to be. The thing with that is, the one thing I have a problem with was the tag team turmoil match. It's more of like a, not really a, I don't have a problem with it. It's just a little funny nitpick that I have. Heth, Connor, or Victor. Pin Jason Jordan when they got into the ring, they won. They would have won. Yeah. Instead, when they set up for the fall of man, I knew they weren't gonna win. Yeah. Because it gave, you know, Chad Gable, Super Gable is what I'm gonna start calling him now because every every move he takes, he pops right back up. Yeah. Have you but noticed that? Like, Ch yeah, like Chad yeah. Gable was he was down for five seconds, like when they when they uh, the Usos laid him out. Yeah. The Ascension come out. They took fucking seven years to get down to the ring. Yeah. By the time they got down to the ring, uh, they they stood and slowly took off their gear, their uh, entrance gear. And by the time they set up for the fall of man, Chad Gable was already fucking healed, magically super healed again. Yeah. And I'm like, what and the then, fuck? Uh, I'm like, what the? What's the point of taking out Chad Gable if he's just gonna pop right back up again? But uh, thought it was, you know, it looks like they sent another the Alpha versus the Usos, which is where they should have gone a long time ago. Had the months ago on there. Months and months. Months ago. too late, but. You know, it's not late. Time. I'll tell you though, I never stopped loving the Usos. The four months back they're really good. I mean, you know, they can work either or, but their face run is really the heel run the other face run. Their heel run is really like rejuvenized like their career. Yeah. I mean They're starting to get some pops now. Yeah. More I mean, I think Roman Reigns killed their face turn. Oh definitely, yeah. Because with Roman getting booed by uh by association, they got booed. Yeah. And it, you could see it deeply affected them. Yeah. Because even when they came up for tag team matches without Roman, they, got, they still got booed. When I was at WrestleMania, they got booed out of the building at WrestleMania. Yeah, like, it was, so. it's by virtue because they're, they're legit Roman's cousin. Yeah. And they're, Which you know, is association. The, 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 the same thing, too. It's, it's because uh, I go back to the thing with uh, Rock. When he came out after the rumble, he got booed for no reason. Yeah. Just because he came out and helped Roman Reigns, like, are you kidding me? Yeah. That that right there was that was just in spite of Roman Reigns. The Rock was obviously pretty, quite pretty pissed about it too. Yeah, you could see he was pissed. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's very. And everyone like looks at that picture and says, "Well, he's pissed because Roman won." No, he's pissed because he got booed. Bro. Yeah. He's not pissed because Roman won. Are you kidding me? He's happy his cousin won the Rumble. He's yeah. Not, he's not pissed off that his cousin won the Rumble. But yeah, Alpha versus the Usos. I hope they hold that match off to WrestleMania, but they probably won't. Um, I think the Usos should go over. Yeah. Honestly. It would be games. nice to see them win the tag titles again. Yeah. And, uh, or that, or uh, Alpha wins at WrestleMania, gets that big WrestleMania moment. Either way, Get that big WrestleMania moment. Either way, uh, either one of the two biggest shows of the year that are going to win. They either it's either here or SummerSlam. I think they, I hope they put this. Or unless it's WWE's turn, it's gonna be the next fucking night on. It's gonna be on Tuesday on yeah. SmackDown. And then uh, because that's what I'm gonna say happens is they win at uh Mania, and then on Tuesday SmackDown, we'll buy, we'll get called up and face uh. Alpha. It will be, it will be something because there's there's 
going to be call ups. Yeah. You know, there, there is there's, well, a, there's a lot of superstars that are ready to be called up. Yeah. Uh, there's at least a good five or well, six. Bobby Roode, maybe he's ready to be. I mean, he's ready to be called up. I mean, he's already he was ready before he was. Yeah, there, he, was, he didn't need an NXT. Yeah, but you know, you know, sometimes he, he didn't need an NXT. James put, Storm didn't need an NXT. Uh, Nakamura really didn't need an NXT. NXT. A lot of these people don't need an NXT. Yeah, but well, a lot they of, do it because it's more of a. It, it, they know they can get over. Whereas if let's say Nakamura went straight to the main roster, well, someone that needs no, NXT, you you because I, I do hear that they have the UK Championship on NXT right now. Yeah, they do. So Tyler Bate is definitely someone that needs NXT because when he's I don't know if you've seen him come out or anything yet, but when he comes out, he's a very bland gimmick. It's not something that's going to get over right away. Yeah, he's just you know what he is. He's got the young kid gimmick. Yeah. You know I'm young. I'm young. But he can yeah, definitely he's only nineteen, but he's, he's turning twenty. With but he's definitely, you know, he, he has a lot. He, he can learn a lot, you know. Uh, yeah, he's still really super, you know, uh, super young. I bet Pete Dunne would get over really, really well on the main roster, maybe because uh, he does, that's he does that's it. more of a indie yeah. reaction. See, uh, it's the same thing with the cruiserweights. Let's talk about them now. Let's go. Uh, I'm going back well, to that. Well, it's the cruiserweights. It's a big difference going from a, I guess Steve calls it a smart type of crowd. Yeah. Where they're invested in the product. Yeah. They're invested in products outside of WWE. So they know who these people are. They know their backstory. That's why someone like a Cedric or a TJ or a Brian Kendrick or Brian a, Kendrick was in or a, a, so. a Rich Swan. Yeah, they knew Kendrick beforehand, but yeah. Kendrick still comes out to no reaction. And, so let's, uh, you know, like a Swan or, you know, uh, like a guy who they've seen in the indie scene. Yeah. They don't get reactions as much as well as they did in NXT. You know why? Because no one cares. Yeah. It's a casual fan that's watching. But yeah, and they so don't have uh, a clue. before we get to the cruiserweights, uh, while tagging titles, it looked like they're gonna do Sheamus and Big Cass, but well, not Sheamus and Big Cass. Sheamus and Big Cass versus, versus Cesaro and Enzo Amore. <laughs> Cesaro and Sheamus versus Enzo and Big Cass, win it for either winner faces Gallows and Anderson for the tag titles, or they'll just do a triple threat at Fast Fast Lane. That'd be and, nice. Uh, Oh, so they're gonna do a triple threat at fast lane, but only two people will be in the ring at the same time. Yeah, I don't know why they do that, but that was that. I don't that, know. That was at that holiday show that we went to. It was a you've triple never threat tag but team you've match. You've never complained about that before. They always do triple threat tag matches. Triple threat tag team matches, but there was two people in the ring, not three. Gallows and Anderson stood in the fucking apron for two minutes, not doing anything. But uh, yeah, yeah. But I think uh, you know, get Angel and Cass are gonna finally get the big one with the tag titles at Mania, um, which I think will be really good. Everyone will pop for that. Um, the cruiserweights. Obviously, we have a little bit of a debacle with that because Rich Swan got hurt. Rich Swan, um, and there's nothing. Like, a, like I said, like there's two people competing for the yeah. championship. Now Jack Gallagher is in, uh, introduced into it. That's three people now. And the cruiser divisions for been around for how long now? About maybe since September. Exactly. I am in pretty interested though. Uh, just seeing a Jack Gallo Neville feud that's going to be uh, yeah pretty I mean, interesting. That Neville's doing all he can to try to revive this this show, uh, the two hundred five and the yeah. Cruiser division, and it's just not working. Yeah. He the biggest pop was for Akira Tozawa. He comes out to thunderous pops because he's fucking crazy. I actually was surprised he didn't get cheered because I didn't think he was going to get cheered. Actually. He came, he came out and he got the yeah yeah thing going on. That's over. He even Michael Cole or uh, Michael Cole I think mentioned it. it's like this is the biggest pop like I've heard from a cruiserweight class cruiserweight division match. Yeah. He's got this crowd wrapped around his finger. But you know, yeah, but yeah, you know, I know. I, Gallagher, Neville, I think are gonna have a pretty interesting program. And it's for once a few that's not based around friendship. It's actually yep. based around like you know. They're all friends. Yeah. Because it doesn't seem like they're friends. And uh, Rich Swan what I do like about Neville too, he's not friends with it. Neville's not friends with anyone in the cruiserweight division. He doesn't. He doesn't. When, he, when he's in tag match with the people, he just he doesn't care to team with them. He just, he wants to take, take all the ne spotlight for himself. Neville, T.J. Perkins, Brian Kendrick, Rich Swan, they're all friends. All right, all friends. All, all of them are friends. Everybody in the WWE's friends like we talked about. Kalisto and uh, Apollo Crews, the friends. A uh, piece, though, I always call them. A <laughs> piece, though! But, uh, <laughs> book that game. That's your team name. Yeah. A piece, though! But anyhow, uh, so, uh... <laughs> you have a piece, but anyhow, though, uh, I do. I think that Kendrick Akira was out of you. That's just really weird. It was supposed to be Tajiri, but he hurt himself. Yeah. What to do? You know he came back, right? When? Last week. He came back and spit green mist in uh, Kendrick's face. 
Again? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I think they're going to the queue. I think, I don't know what to, is the GOA only going to work 205 live shows or is he working more? So. Uh, it depends. I don't know. I've been seeing him. Yeah. So, because I don't watch 205 live because it's garbage. Uh, um, obviously, Tony Nese was supposed to be feuding with TJ Perkins. Uh, he, Tony Nese is hurt, so. That's a little funny tidbit of information there. Um, see, to me, this is like the confusing aspect of it all with uh, with Tony Nese. He's going on to feud with Austin Aries. Hmm. Austin Aries is playing wrestling. So uh, you can definitely tell that you. match is going to happen. I think at WrestleMania. Yeah, it is. It's that's that's going to be uh, Austin Aries' first WWE match. He's officially on the main roster. Yeah, I know that. And, and you can definitely tell he's coming back because he's. Talking on the yeah. mic more now. He's doing more interviews. That, that's the thing too. They're trying to like with the Tony Nese thing about how he how he was like making fun of him and stuff. That's their feud. Like he's you know yeah. eventually. But who's the heel in this feud? That's the thing. Like I don't know. Like is Tony is Austin Aries going to be the face? Because <laughs> like, yeah. Austin Aries was the one putting him down to begin with. Yeah. So I actually I don't know if I want to I want to see Devil versus Aries at WrestleMania instead. I mean, but I mean Tony Tony Nese is a great wrestler. Oh yeah, yes, but there's no denying that. But like. That would want to get to be interesting. I mean, I'm I'm intrigued by that. Yeah. To see, you know, they say, you know, more so towards mania, they're gonna set it up to where he's interviewing with something. Something's gonna happen to, to Austin something. Aries. I think they're trying to play Austin Aries off like he's the biz. Yeah. And that's because. But Neville, but Neville and Aries, I think would be more interesting. Plus, it's, it gets the cruiserweight title. Yeah. A nice. Can you imagine too? Like, you can even say that Neville. You know, he's obliterated the division, even though he's only fought like two guys and obliterated them. He but, obliterated the division, and yeah. he was friends with everyone before that, though. And then uh, Aries can be in the view, and he'll be like, well, you obliterated the division, but he didn't obliterate one guy. He takes off his glasses. We haven't seen him take off his glasses yet. He's like, see this? I am now clear to wrestle, and I'm going to wrestle you for the Cruiserweight title. Well, he says, I'm officially joining the Cruiserweight division. And then he uh, lays out Neville. Obviously, I guess he doesn't do the brain bustle anymore, so... Uh, he lays him up with like a 450, like he knocks him down on the ground. And like, yeah. Um, and, and you know, this is in, in, a, in a in a good way. This can help the cruiserweight division. Yeah. It gets him off commentary. He's great on commentary. He's yeah. a great talker. Phenomenal. One of the best in the business. One, I, I told you about this line but, earlier. When uh, him and Mo are really great on commentary together. Like when Mo, when um, Ali Devari was facing Mustafa Ali, who are both good wrestlers. Mustafa Ali went for the frog, but like, no splash in the water. And Aries is just like, no splash in the water. And he's just like, just go with me, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> See, and it gets Aries off commentary. Yeah. I mean, Aries is one of the best talkers in the business. Yeah. Oh, it has been for a very long time. And it gives someone else an opportunity to do commentary. And it gets, and it gives the cruiser division more um, credibility. Yeah. And it's something I'm really happy about is... This may not be true, but it seems like they're finally backing away from this Cedric Alexander Noam Dahl feud. Thank God. I hope, because it, if, if, if I mean, there's still stints of it, but it's at least not based around Alicia Fox or just wrestling now. So, um, I mean, I don't mind Noam Dahl. I just don't really care that much for him. Just, and again, this this spots open for the cruiserweight title. Yeah. Cedric Alexander should easily be in contention yep, for it. That's what I'm saying. I've been saying this for months now. Stop dicking around with him. You'll see him on Raw and the Cruiser and uh, on Raw once a month. Yeah. Well, he's he's at least he's in a. I mean, I, I I'm always happy like well at least he's in a few. They're doing something, but I'd rather just what they're doing with him isn't it wasn't good. It's not good enough. It's never been good enough. He you know he is an exceptional athlete. Yeah. And. They're treating him like shit. Putting you know him in lower matches. This feud with Alicia Fox. Like, why? This feud with why? Alicia Fox is ridiculously stupid. Um, first he was she was his girlfriend, and now she went crazy again. And yeah, that's kind of the, not the the problem is you don't watch two hundred five live, so it's like you know this storyline has been more of like a two hundred five live storyline than uh, you know. Like and now they, that they have matches. And, Alicia Fox interrupts the match, and I'm like, get him out of it. Someone else to drop the ball with, too, is Drew Gulak. Yep. Really bad. Every time he's up there, he loses. Yeah. I mean, this guy's one of those, one of the toughest. This, this guy legitimately is a badass. Yeah. He is a badass. If you watch his stuff on the indie scene for CZW, this dude's a badass. And 
Then, and, uh, obviously, to uh, Mustafa Ali, we're doing okay with right now. Uh, but you, you're not going to drop the ball with him, probably. Um, Ali Adabawi, kind of. I mean, there's Jack Gallagher, if he's now over, so he's, he's going to drop the ball with him. It would be interesting if they brought back his brother, yeah. Sean Devari, and used and had like a brother brother feud. That'd be really cool. That would be interesting. That would really that would help him watch him. Jack Gallagher, boy, you know, he's really doing really well on the main roster. He's um, doing well, but he falls victim to the to the no reaction. Yeah, definitely. They're at least trying yeah. with him. Yeah, they're actually they're giving him a character. They're trying stuff. with him. They're trying to get these guys over, but some of them are just so uninteresting. I want to think he's a new finisher. You got to think of the ropes really. Wait, so Jack Gallagher. Jack Gallagher's finish is a drop kick? Yeah. In the book, into the turn buckle, yeah. Puts all the move, but it's like, you know. What? But you didn't you didn't know that was his I finisher. Didn't know that, I don't I don't think that's how he's his matches. He has the, he does the headbutt and then he sets him up with a drop kick in the corner. That's stupid. Yeah. And then uh which That's like yeah, we don't have any boy yet. And then TJ Perkins, I actually don't really care if he's used or not, I'm not gonna lie. I don't care, I don't like him. Uh, what else? Which Swan obviously is code, so we can't like, can't like use a code. Yeah, TJ Perkins is so great. Where are those people now? Where's TJ Perkins with the, the oh, he's so It does kind of suck, though. He wins the first, I feel bad for him. He wins the first Cruiserweight Classic, and then he loses the title again, but you never see him again. If you get me, that, that kind of sucks for him, you know? So it's, it's just, they they killed his character. Yeah, they They funny. gave him a gamer, nerdy fucking gift. Yeah, I like... I, I don't like this TJ Perkins. I like the who's way class. It's gotta be. He's gotta be different. Like, yeah. I don't like what they're doing with him, and it just made it, it made him so unlikable. Yeah. But this dab. I, I can't really complain about the dabbing because that's not WWE's fault. That's. But when he dab, I mean, especially too like, I don't see TJ Perkins as this baby face. I see him as a heel because they try to make him like say that he's a heel, but he. He's like, I know I'm good. He's like when he come out, when all the guys were cutting the promos, when he cut his promo, I got more of a heel promo when he was talking. Like, yeah, it seems like I get more of a heel vibe when he speaks. Um, it's just because he's so uninteresting. And then, uh, so yeah, that's the cruiserweight division, I guess, in a nutshell. Uh, and then, uh, see, this is how Chris does. It makes Chris high talk. It makes me fucking. It, it, Wrecks my brain and ruins my brain. But uh, oh, obviously, we didn't even exhausted. talk about this at all. The Luke Harper situation. He's finally getting over it. I think we vaguely talked about it, but we didn't really I did, it. yeah. Um, I love it. I mean, and I do like that Van Uyen did say he's going to have a title shot, I guess, in a way, because it opens up some more possibilities. The thing with this that Luke Harper, this Luke Harper feud with Orton and why it is, um, it's putting Harper over. Yeah, it is. It's not like... Orton's getting over and not Harper. Yeah. Like Hort oh, Horton. Horton, he has a who? Orton is putting over Harper. They had a great match on the pay per view. Had Orton just gone on one of, and won a minute and a half, what's this, what's the point of turning Luke Harper babyface? It yeah. makes him look like a it makes him look like a punk bitch going out there. You know, he did all this to get over, and then first pay per view match they have. Where he's the, the face, he gets squashed. <laughs> yeah. Instead of now, instead of doing that, they had them have one hell of a fight. Yeah. And it turned. And it, that was the match of the night. Yeah. In yeah. my opinion, because I'm not really saying much stuff. Not lie. It was it. You know, if you put if you pull up the card and see like on paper, the Elimination Chamber match is supposed to be the best match. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> so we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Luke Harper versus Randy Orton for me stole the show. Yeah, definitely. In terms of like, just you know, I love when Luke Harper does those palm strikes. Oh yeah, it looks like that's like, I'm like, damn, I'm like, that's pretty sick. I love when he does, I love when he's he does his, uh, suicide dive or twelve page suicida, you know, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I, I call it the twelve page suicida now. Yeah. Fucking more on all of stuck like the, in my head. If, if uh, Mo and Al commentate, I'll call it twelve page suicida. If somebody else commentates, I'll call it suicide dive. So. I, 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 end up, I end up calling it now the more more so now that the two faces. Really you know what the funny thing? I'm really digging more now on commentary because he's a great power play, but sometimes it's just so comedic to listen yeah. to on commentary now. Like, uh, like obviously when he, because sometimes when he'll say something, Jay, like I said, Austin is, but like sometimes people call him out on it, and you'll hear him say, "Just go with me, guys. Just go with me." <laughs> yeah. You know it, it's, you know it that match. I looked up to, it exceeded my expectations. Definitely. I thought it was going to be a good brawl. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be a great brawl. Yeah. It ended up being that. 
And Lukaku, you know, too. Yeah, yeah. Him coming out of nowhere and just attacking Why when he put out his LED light bulb, I thought was great. You know, and the, uh, the, the thing um, with their pay-per-view match that they had or in, in Harper was, look at Harper was going to win the match. Yeah, it did. You know, he hit the discus clothesline and everything. He, I think he was setting up for another finishing move to hit on him. Yeah. And Orton nailed him with an RKO. Yeah. You're like, damn. I was like, damn, I fucking thought I wanted Harper to win that match. Yeah. Because it was like, it made Harper look credible. And during the match, every time Harper did this, it got over. Yeah. Everyone was I was really concerned because when he came out, he didn't know what she had he, more, he, so. he didn't get He didn't get that much of a reaction, but as the match went along, yeah. he got a bigger and bigger reaction. People are starting to really like Luke Harper. I mean, yeah. I, I liked him to begin with, but, you know, the past couple of years, I started to really, really like him. And, you know, I think this is the best thing for him. Yeah. They were testing it on the indies, not the indies, the, the, the live events. They were testing it out to see if it would work, and apparently it worked because he turned face. Yeah. And then um, and it's and it's working now, you know it's he's unpredictable. I was, he's stealing fucking Bray Wyatt's fucking you know mysterious like entrance thing. Yep. Where you know lights go out and they come back on. He stole that from, which is awesome. And I do like he's that. Kind of like uh, rub it in his face type of thing. Like I could do also this too. Also, uh, looks like he'll be fighting for the main championship on SmackDown. Makes him look credible. Yeah. But, he's not. So, he's not just the lackey anymore. Yeah. He's broke free of Bray Wyatt, and now. He's on his own. So now I see one of two things happening at WrestleMania. One, Papa wins the Battle Royal, then Wyatt and Orton the next week cut the like a weird Wyatt family formal like normal, then Orton says, you know Wyatt, I still got my title shot, but I'm gonna use it to make sure that you keep your championship against Harper, prevent Harper from winning. Yeah. And obviously, Orton's gonna win the title, which I don't wanna see that, but it's, it's gonna happen. That would be interesting um, if if a weird thing happens and Luke Harper wins the championship. That'd be sick. Just like out of the blue. Yeah. That would get a massive pop. Penn and, Penn and Wyatt too. Penn and Wyatt to win the championship. Like, or like uh, Harper, uh, like Orton hits the RKO. Harper grabs Orton, throws him out of the ring. Yeah. Picks him up, throws him with the distance clothesline, and then pins him and wins. Yeah. So it's like he hit him with his finisher and he won. Not and, Orton's. And then, obviously the second thing is, Way Wyatt and Luke Harper can just face at WrestleMania. So either Way Wyatt can win, um, and Orton say, I still have my title shot, I want it right now. And then uh, Orton take the title from him. Or Harper can win the title, and this would be terrible. Orton says, I still have my title shot, and you're not gonna disrespect Way Wyatt and fight for the honor of Way Wyatt. Yeah. Win the title from Wade. And it's, 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 it could go a lot of ways, but it would be, be shocking, up. and it would be, Crazy if they want Blue Carpet winning the championship. Oh, yeah. Because I think, you know, it's something different, something that came uh, will come out completely out of left field. Yeah. But it would be interesting. Yeah. Because it's like the build up could be like, what can Luke Harper do as champion? Like, what has Bray Wyatt done to Luke Harper? Yeah. Kind of like a, you know, he was tormented for so years, he was manipulated to think a certain way. Now he's the champion. Yeah. What's Bray Wyatt going to do now? Is he going to suck up to Luke Harper? Like, kind of thing, like, it kind of rolls reversed. Oh, yeah. To where, like, Luke Harper now is the guy, like, the, like the, the manipulator and or whatnot, whatever. So the question I have, though, is if, uh, it's going to be really weird. This is probably thinking about it too much, but I don't think, Wyatt technically gave up his shot for the title. I don't think he can just like say, hey, I changed my mind, I want to fight. I don't, yeah, like, he gave up his opportunity. Like, well, like, he right. doesn't have it anymore. So what's the, and then it's less, you waste Daniel Bryan's time, you waste making the battle royal. That would be fun, it would be fun if he came out at the end and like a Luke Harper and the guy technically didn't actually give up my, yeah. my title shot. So you don't win the match and then Bryan's like, oh yeah, it doesn't work that way. And then obviously. See, the thing is too with that, it's like, it makes, because this is what I read, is that they have nothing for why or no what to do in WrestleMania. Yeah. Pretty much. It's like just feeding Luke with Luke Harper, that's it. Yeah. There's nothing else more to it. Yeah. There's nothing more left for Orton to do until WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah. So they're trying to pro I mean, to me that's them running out of ideas to do with the story. Yeah. And so I think they kind of went with him kind of feeding with now with Luke Harper to add intrigue to it. Yeah. It's intriguing. It brings you in. Yeah. And then Obviously, we've got this thing that's happening with AJ Styles. Don't really care the direction they're going with AJ Styles. Uh, him gonna obviously they're starting to build up the Shane McMahon match. Was on talking smack this week. He's really upset he's not getting his one-on-one rematch, which he's very validated to have. 
you know. Um, see, to me, this whole thing is I want to see where this goes with with him against Shane. Like, is it going to be a good match? Like, what's it, is he going to get a title rematch out of this? Yeah. Like, there's no reason for him to fight Shane McMahon with no consequences. Yeah. Like, if he wins, does he get, you know, a WWE title match at SummerSlam or the next pay per view? Whatever, whatever you want, the whatever bank or whatever. But it's like, yeah, because AJ Styles is, because uh, he's a, because that's the problem I have with this is it does one, it's a fill a match for AJ Styles. Yeah. And two, and two is he like AJ is complaining that he's not getting his one on one rematch. So that pretty much like all this complaining has drove him to the point where it's like, yeah, stop bugging me, okay? You beat me at WrestleMania, you get a WWE Championship match at SummerSlam. Yeah, because like. You know, uh, AJ Styles, you and know, that would, uh, the, that would be the, the headlining match yeah. at SummerSlam. Because AJ um, versus whoever for the championship. AJ Styles uh, needs um, a big WrestleMania win, you know. Uh, and uh, AJ Styles, you know, facing Shane would be really cool. Um, it would it, it is, I mean, he, you know, his first WrestleMania match was really good. Yeah. Against Chris Jericho, we all agree. Wrong person went over, but. Stupid yeah. something that happens all the time in WWE, the wrong person goes over. And it just happened to be someone who deserved that win more, but... And now, he needs to win at WrestleMania again. Yeah. And he will, because obviously, you know, uh, he gets a WWE title match at WrestleMania. And then, uh, obviously, too, I guess it doesn't look like they're going to go into the scene of, with the Brian Miz match, which kind of wish they had, but... No, they're not going with that. I mean, it kind of looked like it for a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, the match, you know... I feel like they're trying to hold off on it until Brian is like mentally like ready to go. He's probably not focused on no, yeah. right now. You know. And he just started lifting weights again. Yeah. So maybe SummerSlam. Plus, he's like, like I said, he's, ha he's just about to have a kid in April. Yeah. So if he's going to have the kid the day of WrestleMania, so it's like. You know, it's, it's sum SummerSlam's in August. Yeah. He just started working out now for the first time. Because he can, if he can finally work out. Maybe we get another, we get one more match from Daniel Bryan. And he goes over. You know, it'd be really cool to really identify that feud is the, if they have the Miz and beat the Bella Twins' YouTube channel while Brian is on it, and uh, not necessarily talk crap about the baby because that'd be really fucked up, but talk crap about Daniel Bryan saying, "See, you're not focused. On, you're not. I'm going to beat you easily at SummerSlam because look at what your life has become. You just you you talk about how you you don't go on the internet at all, but look what you've become. Yeah. You know." Or you know, um, you're on your. You're not you focused know, on. You're not focused. You 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 have a kid, yeah. and you're not focused on the goal at hand, which is yeah. being the GM of the SmackDown. You know, and then you know. He's hey, like, look who's back! Obviously, NFL wouldn't be the NFL. Boys NFL wouldn't be back. NFL NFL wouldn't be back by the time he's like you're even doing like NFL predictions sitting down watching NFL. When you should be doing your job as a SmackDown GM. Yeah. Man. It'd be interesting. We're kind of we're kind of going over into like hypothetical situations, like what if yeah. Harper was to win at WrestleMania? So I'll just kind of at WrestleMania, or you know, I'm just gonna kind of ask well, him about. Theoretically speaking, I'd strip down to my underpants and do backflips. And and uh, um, and you don't want to see what that. What about? No one wants to see that. And we brought up the point too, like what um what happens if the if AJ wins against Shane at WrestleMania and he gets a WWE title match at SummerSlam because of winning because Shane McMahon is sick and tired of AJ complaining about. How he never fully got his number one contendership rematch in a one-on-one -on -one match. So Shane says, "Okay, if you beat me at WrestleMania because you're pissing me off because you keep asking me, you can have your you can have your rematch at SummerSlam." Kind of thing like yeah. that. Also, we kind of talked about just in general with the product. So I'll just kind of ask him right now, so that we can who's weights. Kind of talked about that. Yeah, we'll be talking about that for a little bit too. What do you think about I never really worked the show. I talked to, to you about this earlier. Uh, me and yeah. my mom. Me. It said, uh, so 205 Live, it, I'm not saying it's a bad show, it's a good show, but it's unnecessary because they could honestly just make SmackDown 3 hours long. It's, it, I agree with you on that because and you know what? It's, and 205 Live should be first. It and shouldn't be last. People, people, people train. People should yeah, complain yeah. about the three hour round three hour SmackDown all they want. Honestly, it does need to be three hours. SmackDown's more compelling 
if you add another round. And you know what the problem is? It's the first one costs too big, and they don't have enough time to give all these guys characters. So you yeah. know, if you do cut them in half, and you give them like, if you give the cruiserweights maybe about an hour each show, you know, Raw's cruiserweights get an hour, SmackDown's cruiserweights so get an hour. They should should be exclusive to any brand. Right. They should have enough time to. Because I, I think they should I, I be on SmackDown exclusively. I think it should be both personally. I think that I understand that the Cruiserweight Classic was just meant to be wrestling. It wasn't meant to be any mic work. It was just meant to be a wrestling clinic, and it was good. But wait, that's not going to work anymore. That, it's the yeah. big time now. You need to talk. Yeah. You need to have a personality. That's why TJ Perkins didn't work. That's why exactly. Ryan we talked. That's what you're saying. Like, but Kendrick, I think was meant to say. Well, no. Kendrick worked, but like, but he didn't. But he yeah. didn't like adapt his character to yeah. the modern era. Right? It's, it's the same thing. Guy. I'll tell you. Yeah, Jack Neville's was Rich good. Swan. Worked. Neville yeah. is working. I mean, Jack Gallagher's working. Not working. Jack yeah. Gallagher's working. Yeah, but you know, it's 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 tough nowadays. Like the like we I brought this up. Like they're all friends. Like they're all friends. Like outside the ring. Like oh, we, we you know Rich Swan and Neville were in TJ. We're all friends. Everyone's friends here. And it's not like there's no like legitimate reason to feud. Yeah. Besides, oh, we're all friends at one point. Yeah. You so turned on me. You know, they, so we're not friends anymore. That's kind of the whole thing they're trying to do with this D-Boy and Kendrick Akira Tozawa story. So you watch, you know, obviously you know that storyline yeah. a little bit more than he does. So, like they're trying to make it seem like they, D-Boy and Kendrick thinks that he's his, what do you call it, protege? Protege, yeah. And uh, then, uh, and then, uh, protege. And then, uh, Akira Tozawa like doesn't know it because he doesn't speak English, so he doesn't. So and then he's yeah, like, you know, what's funny is Akira Tozawa already has a character. Yeah, he's the hot rising star. He can't speak English. Yeah, it's working. It's working, yeah. And uh, we talked about Tony Nese. Tony Nese against Aust- Austin Aries at WrestleMania. What's your What's your opinion on that? Is that happening? Or yeah, that's that's Austin. His first me first match on the WWE main roster is at WrestleMania against Tony Nese. When was this confirmed? Uh, it was speculation that it could happen. Not that long ago, I, actually. I, I had heard that they were going to do Neville versus Austin Aries or something. I, I heard I heard Tony Nese, but it could be Neville too. I, 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 I know, by, like, by the way that uh, he interviewed him, Tony Nese, when he came on Raw like a few weeks ago, when he came up to him and like, was insulting him and stuff like that. I like, think Austin Aries... It could be like a match on 205 Raw. Austin Aries can play the best of both worlds. He can be a good heel, he can be a good face. I think at this See, moment in time, he needs to be a good face. See, but that wouldn't make any sense. Like, it's be three face commentators. Stop. Doing when he gets off commentary, I'm just saying. Why when he gets off yeah. commentary? But then again, who knows? They could do it. And, I, and then I saw an idea like it was after Neville defeats Jack Gallagher, and Harry gets into it and interviews him. But they could make him an anti hero, and like, if someone screws up, they'll shit on them. And yeah. then uh, Neville says that he's obliterated everyone in the division, and Harry says, well, there's one guy in the I'm the Green Goblin. I'm the king of the cruiserweights, and I'm the Green Goblin, too. And then Aries, I beat up Spider. Yeah, you're not, you're not beating Spider. <laughs> you're not helping Neville's case. <laughs> it's people like you. See, the, people like you, the reason why you turn heel. <laughs> but then yeah, then Aries gets but after Neville says, I like Mary Jane and not the girl. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, so then now, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but anyhow, so then now, so then uh, Austin, but then Austin Aries after Neville says that he's going to My dad is slick. That's, I, that's not close when he's out there. I don't know, I'm going from like British to Scottish. And then, so, uh, then Austin Aries can say, you didn't obliterate everyone in the division because you have this one guy you didn't obliterate. And then he takes off his sunglasses because he hasn't taken off his sunglasses in a while. And, and then he's like, I have eyes. I have eyeballs. No, he's like, the my eyes. eyes. He's like, my eye is fully healed. That means I'm clear to wrestle. So, and then I jump on your two glass eye. Well, that'd be, that'd be whole, I've actually seen, I actually had a friend in high school who had uh, two glass eyes. And he did that once. And it was one of the most horrifying experiences of my life. Yeah, but that guy like, Just empty eyes on it. Imagine, imagine that. Can you see through those? Or do you? No, he's blind. Do you remember a lot of eyes? This is random. I'm horrified. This is, really, this is really random, but do you remember uh, they did like a. Um, a, a talent show in WWE, and they had a guy like pull his eye out of his face. And they didn't fucking show it on TV though, because it was so fucking gross. Oh, it was, no, it was the most horrifying. Because it, it was during a fo- it was during a football practice because it was the water one for um, our team. And like during a practice, uh, he's like, "So you guys are all tough. I got like, yeah, I can do something. I'll figure out." Like does it, and I was utterly horrified. 
<laughs> like I've been tackled by 300 pound guys before and almost got crushed to death and that's still the most horrifying experience of my life. Alright, but also, yeah, let's get back to what we were talking about. So also we talked about Benny should be a new gimmick, the blind wrestler. With glasses. He's like, it doesn't seem like the rough turns around takes a stick. <laughs> we also talked, so, uh, we also talked about, we went back to the wife and everything, and you kind of talked about it already, so. I was just talking about, even though I know Chris Miller doesn't want to talk about him, but it's something like that kind of does. He's too gay, so. No, we're not talking about him. So, uh, no, 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 I you know fucking enjoyed you know that what? thoroughly. But you know what? That was, that was, I was sitting there, I was, I was wanking my junk to that. You know what, I, you know what I've noticed? I, I enjoyed it. Tweaking my, my favorite parts of SmackDown. I was talking stick. One of my favorite parts of SmackDown when AJ attacked James Ellsworth. One of my favorite parts of the Rumble, watching James Ellsworth get killed by getting tossed out of the ring. You know All what? I'm saying is, he's a good punching match. You know what I'm saying is, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing him croaked. I wouldn't mind, you know. What did his What if his eyes, when his eyes closed permanently and he can't? He's in, and he's in a casket. You know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Here's what I'm saying. And he's dead. James Ellsworth, the heart coach. I would, I would never Ellsworth. watch wrestling again. You know, James Ellsworth is being huge, right? <laughs> so what do you think that's going on? You're kind of sexy as fuck. Uh, they use me too. I think what could potentially happen is maybe he's a, he's a, this goes he's a cuck. Maybe they just do this trap until the draft, and then the draft, draft she gets drafted back to Raw, finds out she's gonna. So what's it gonna be? Is it gonna be like, like oh, draft? Angel's on Raw? Okay, fine. Is it gonna be another draft then? It would be chaos. Probably. They're not gonna put them together. They just don't feel like the uh, room is on the books. It's literally every couple of their movies on as a. On the screen, that's my one. So it was Mania and, uh, yeah. and uh, so, no, I gotta say something. Yeah, let's talk about the Miz for a second. Uh, well, yeah, oh, yeah, please. Are we talking about anything in particular right now? We just got no, we're just we're shooting the shit mostly. Just yeah. like, let's talk about yeah, the we, we haven't really talked about much of like, really much of anything. Guy, we didn't even talk any product. I we didn't, I don't think we, we barely talked about SmackDown. He's the, the guy that tomorrow. I will defend to death that he is a good wrestler, he is a great night worker. I will defend yeah. him to death on that. He's been. He's wait, 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 wait. Did you say the Miz is a great worker? No, a good wrestler and a great mic worker. Mic worker. On the mic. Good on the on the mic. It's nice knowing you guys. What? Good what? It's nice knowing it. What? You don't think the Miz is good on the mic? I thought you were. I actually thought you were. Yeah, right. Okay, it's 2010. I've, I've actually enjoyed watching the Miz. I think he's an asshole, and sometimes I. Do go to shows just because I, I get into a fight cool. with John about this all the time. I saw it on the chat. Miz is the worst wrestler I've ever seen in my life. Oh, he's not that He's good. I think he's good. He's good. He is awful. He's good. Again, look who he's in the ring with. Dolph Ziggler. Mm, my point exactly. Look who's carrying him in these matches. There's no cap. The, the Miz had his hook. The Miz keeps up. Because he's, you know why he's getting kept up? Because he's being carried. I don't think so. No, he's, he's not being carried. carried in those matches. Miz has, Miz has his role you, Okay, so, so let's take Dolph Ziggler out of this equation and put in, in, in Victor from the Ascension. Would those matches be the same? No. My point exactly, because Miz sucks. But Dolph Ziggler had his part in the match as well. Dolph Ziggler, what's the reason the matches were entertaining? So but take out the Miz and now you're always put the Miz put in Victor. Relevant. You put in Miz, you put in you put, you put Victor in for Miz, yeah. and you get an entertaining matchup. Here's the problem with that. The Miz is more relevant than Victor. James Ellsworth is more relevant than Victor. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's true. You put fucking James Ellsworth in that match too, and look what happens. Uh, and here's, the, here's the thing. Miz, very good on the mic. Very good on the mic. He can piss. He can piss a crowd off more than they want to admit. He gets the heavy attitude. He's supposed to get. Yes, he does. And he 
This guy only got it this week on blog. Yes, he did. Garbage and ring down. The mid Kendall has come out every week and get the living hell boot out of him based on what he's saying. So what you're saying is basically his entering flaws can be substituted for microphone part. In an odd in an odd way, yes. Well what if he what if so let's say he stopped talking in the mic then? He'd be in a, he'd be good, but it won't be great. He 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 wouldn't be good at all. Because it's not keeping the misery. However, I will say this one thing The fact that he the okay. fact that he's been see my point against the Miz is he's been literally handed every single opportunity known to man. Ziggler loses the match and gets fucking berated about it. Miz, lose, Miz loses the match and gets a world title shot. How does that make any sense? He's awesome. Well, you can't say Miz. I, I, I definitely think Miz got handed some things, but I, he, definitely work, he definitely had to work the bottom up to, in the company when he actually got here. Like, remember? His early, remember his earliest stuff? He couldn't fucking repeat a number. The number is, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, his whole argument, the stuff. I mean, he had worms put on his mouth. He had, you know, uh, Big Dick Johnson dancing in his face. Uh, you know, so Miz has had to. I think Miz has had to work from the bottom up in a way because he's, he's, he's had he's, he's had a lot of shit done to him beforehand. But what he's in the past, well, it's not been that long into the, his, the seven years since he's been WWE champion when he first won in 2010. So it hasn't been quite seven years yet. But in the past six, I'll say six and a half years, he's had everything handed to him. Yes. WWE championships, intercontinental championships. He won the WWE. Tag team I, think he I think he won the WWE. How do you think he got in that match? He, uh, you know, when they built, they put, they built him behind, they, they got behind him. You know, uh, the Miz, I mean, he, he, he came a long way, like, uh, from being John Moore's black, he learned from. I just don't like him. I don't think he's good. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Can I just read this? Alright, so, remember when Hernandez returned to TNA pre taped the load of matches? And TNA just got still it, yeah. under contract to yeah. the underground, so they couldn't air anything. Yeah. Well, the Hardys traveled to Tijuana. This is on the official, yeah, official Watch Media page. The Hardys traveled to Tijuana on the latest episode of Impact to challenge Psychosis and Super Crazy. But the referee was under contract to the underground, so they threatened legal ramifications, but couldn't cut it out. So instead, they decided to oh, yeah, throw her out the ref's face like a dragger on cops. I think yeah, about this, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. See, I don't know why they didn't use one of their referees. <laughs> it was probably a. Uh, so, uh, you watch? Do you even watch TNA really? Or no? Yes. I don't like to watch what's here and there. That's the only thing that watch is. For some odd reason, I have no clue, but I still watch Alley storyline for some reason. I have no idea. I gave up on that. Yeah. that. That really pissed me off. What pisses you off about it? That the entire fucking storyline pisses me off. See, he, see, the thing is too is Braxton Sutter gets. Goes to pick up his fucking water bottle. Yeah. She's like, yes, yes, I do. I will marry you. Like he, just, he didn't fucking say anything. Yeah. He picked up his water bottle. Remember when WWE copied the uh, carriage storyline? Ah. Uh, and AJ called him out on it live on TNA. Yeah. Apparently, getting into an elevator and having your name be AJ must be a popular thing nowadays. Yeah, I remember and that. I just remember Craig Spencer says, "Ooh." That Carolina story is fucking stupid. The AJ was the message that he's AJ Styles. Ah. Uh, I did. I, the question. The question I do. The question that I did ask you was, "What does Maria Canellas have on Braxton Sutton? Like, what that is? What do you think it is?" Like, I legit don't know. I don't know. I, I hate the storyline. I, I hate know. TNA. I hate anything about it. TNA. Of course they do. Yeah. I hope they hate me. All right, but we didn't really talk. Yeah, we didn't really talk about. Yes, let's look, look, We didn't really. Now that we have you here, now we're gonna attack you verbally. We're gonna attack you verbally. Elim the new elimination chamber. What do you want? Oh, it's more an hour about it. Hey, come on. on, it looks slick. As Mo and Al talk, Wait, so no, as it Mo looks and, slick. No, as Mo and Al like to call it the hell, in, the hell in a cell. It looks different. It looks slick. It looks different. Slick. 
It's a slip. It was pads. Those pads on the those pads on the floor now. Those pads. Yes, but see that falling from the top to the pads is still good. Would it have been cooler to see it? Yes. Okay, I get yes. it. I get your so arguments. Wait, that. What's the, so Steve, so when some when a wrestler gets thrown onto a glass pane and it wobbles like plastic, you want to tell me that that's a good chamber? Has it ever really been plastic? Though? Yes. The beginning couple, even uh, the the first like five or six. I don't. I don't. Yeah, the first two. But I don't know. But I just say, I saw it coming. You know, to be honest, I'm just kind of accepting the chamber for what it is. Do I prefer the old chamber, honestly? Yes. Okay. There it is. I uh, prefer the old chamber. Apparently, you don't because you gave the pay-per-view an A minus. I did give the pay-per-view an A minus. Why is it minus it? the fact of what the chamber was? It was still, a, I still had fun watching the match. I uh, one. It wasn't entertaining. <laughs> it was no. I just couldn't get the pet because that chain would just ruins the the, 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 the. the sort of reason why people tuned in in the first place. And here's the thing that pisses me off. So, SmackDown's getting Elimination Chamber. You know what? That's fine. Raw got Hell in a Cell. They both have their own like specialty cage shows. Okay. Now I'm hearing SmackDown is going to have Money in the Bank exclusive. Bullshit. Yeah, it's that is bullshit. If, if anything, they can hold. The money in the bank pay per views for each show separate. That's fine. That should be one. That should be both. Shows. In, both my, get money in, the bank. in my personal opinion, I think it should go back to one to increase the unpredictability of. You know, you could say Dolph Ziggler has the case. He's going to cash in on, uh, you know, the WWE champion. It's going to happen. They promote this for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then boom, shows up on Raw and cashes in. That'd be nice. I, that that I love the unpredictability factor of the money in the bank because. And you know if someone was going to jump brands to cash in on someone else. Like, uh, well, this also isn't like 2007 anymore when the, when no one didn't look online to see who was going to win the match. Okay, let me just say it. WWE people lie. I, mean, I don't care. You can lie to my face. If it creates a surprise, I don't care if you're lying to me. Lie to people. Lie to Dave. Lie to Dave Meltzer. Lie to your fans. If it creates a surprise, lie your ass off. Who gives a shit? How about this? How about this? Stop telling people what's going on. Or lie to them. Or if you, you know, keep it in house. Tell the people you need to tell, and that's it. You know, C- Do not tell outside people. You know, Goldberg is going to be Brock Lesnar, then just tell it who Brock Lesnar is going to win. Or just don't say anything at all. Yeah. Keep it between Vince, Triple H, Vince and Triple H. But essentially, yeah, they should. I, I don't. Curiosity killed the cat, but that curiosity is just very, very compelling sometimes. It really is. It's really hard not to look online sometimes. What's going on? And it, it, but I do it all the time. We all do it. Yeah. It's just, it needs to stop because it's ruining wrestling. The only time in the past couple of years that I've been surprised is when the Dudley Boys came back. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, no one knew that was going to happen. When AJ came, when AJ debuted in WWE, everyone knew that was going to happen because it came out a month before. I remember when I went on the day of Survivor Series and it said major return plan for tonight. I exited out right away because I had an inkling it was going to be Sting anyway. But then, like, towards the end of the period, I'm like, no, it's not coming out. It wouldn't be cool. Like, I, I did, like, like that. Oh, man, I freaked the fuck out. Oh, my I, I freaked out for AJ, too, but it's like, you knew what was going to happen. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, WWE, they've been trying to stop it. They've been, it's been going on for so long that they're trying to stop it. Who, who keeps opening their mouth? Fire Dave them. Meltzer. Fire Kip. Yeah, Dave Meltzer doesn't work at WWE, does he? No, no, but it seems like it. Now the problem is, now they got Sam Roberts in there. Fire Dave Meltzer from life. Now they got Sam Roberts in there. You know, all, you know, everything. The, the one website I say, if you want to go to news, if you want to watch news, if you want to look at news about wrestling, do not go to the Inquisitor because they're 100% liars. Sam Roberts, I wouldn't say, is... Everything you read from the Inquisitor is fake. He's just an online interviewer for... Yeah. Oh, that's I definitely like him. Do you like watching him on the panel? Yeah, I do. I hate, um... I, like, it's like, I hate the other dude. What's his face? Pete Rosenberg. When you think he's an asshole, he's a smart... Oh, you gotta slay him? You gotta slay him? Yeah, he's not. He's a, he's full. Okay, so cut a cut a full cut, cut a full model. Pete Rosenberg thinks he 
is legit smarter than JBL and Paul Heyman. That is the impression I was left feeling after I watched Bring It to the Table. Even though JBL, JBL and Paul Heyman played good cop, bad cop, but let me just tell you, they shredded this guy into pieces. They literally chopped him up, filleted him, and cooked him into little itty bitty pieces. JBL played the they good cop by just They didn't need him, did they? No, um, he was leaving JBL actually. <laughs> so, JBL no, was the good cop who just hit him with the hardcore facts that you can't deny. Like, you just can't say, no, that's not true. It, it's blatantly true what Gila said. Then Paul Heyman was the bad guy. Come in and say, you want to know why? Fuck you, that's a lie. But you know what? He's Paul fucking Heyman. He can say whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, you've been going on for like a wicked long time. <laughs> Tell me that's not true. Yeah, so let's, let's close this up. Did we, did we miss anything? Watch, you know? bring it to the table, guys. I highly suggest watching see, it. You'll yeah. see this Pete Rosenberg guy get eaten alive. All right. So is there, Steve, is there anything else you want to talk about before we finally end this off? It's been going for like an hour. I feel so. I feel sad because I didn't bring on my sword of smart slaying. Uh, sword of? Yes. No, my sword. Of yes. I have yes, a sword of. I have a nerf sword that I've dubbed the sword of smart slaying. I'm sure we're bringing it next episode. Every time it's time to slay, I have to shut the screen. Oh, so the, oh, the next episode? You mean the next episode? You're oh, not going to uh, be on? Oh, please, is there uh, yeah. anything you want to say? Is there anything else you want to cover before you leave? No, I think we've covered pretty much literally everything we could have. All right, make sure to subscribe. Hit what? the like button. Hit, don't hit the dislike button, please don't. Hit the dislike button on the rest of the ground table. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh. But, uh, then. subscribe to the Pro Football Reporters. They're only going to be doing one more episode. One more episode. Actually, no. we probably two. Uh, make sure to check out Owen the Talkinator and... Keep it in the top description. Yeah, I will. And make sure to check out CM Brothers. Remember, if it's a table that's round, be ready to brown. Right. Friendship! I'm back. Magician. Okay. You're in my way, John. Yeah, you know, you're supposed to sit there. All right. Let's all do right. this again because it's fucked up now. All right. Take one. No, no, no. It's Thanks all a lot, Owen. It's all fucked it up. Take one. Do over. Blooper reel. Blooper reel. That we, that we never. That we never. Hey, this, we promise we never do, guys. No, I do. Though I, I put them at the end. Hit this. Yeah.